Hello, hello, hello. I can't figure out this camera situation. What's going on here? Good morning. Happy Sunday. Look who it is. Hi, friend. Hi. I We're got talking. cereal in my teeth. So. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of cereal are you eating? Fro well, I'm done now. Frosted what were you eating? Frosted Flakes. Oh, I have some of that. Do I have like a grown-up. <laughs> I have Cinnamon Toast Crunch, then I also have um, Frosted Flakes. Wait. I meant to say I have I meant to say I have Frosted Flakes and I also have Cinnamon Toast Crunch. It's fine. <laughs> what are you mm -hmm. doing? Like, you're already up and, like, dressed. So I had a weird morning. So that's funny that when you asked if I wanted to go live, I was like, Because I got, I like got anxiety ready today. Not like anxiety ready, but I was like, I gotta, I don't know. But did, did you have some like anxious energy? Alexa, volume down. Did you have like anxious energy that you needed to do something with? Yeah, kind of. I just felt like something. And then I was like, I'm going to do my face early and uh -huh. that'll help. So, so here we are. It, it worked. I'm now live instead of anything else. Actually, you know what? No, no. I've had a productive day. I was writing things. Uh-huh. I started reading this book. Um, Emergent, Emergent Strategy? Strategy. It's one of my favorite books. I have never... So, um... How have we never talked about this book? I can't believe I you've never read it. But someone uh, did a stitch or something of when I was talking about the barrel of laughs. And she was like, I like to focus on the fact, you know, I told you that they found laughter. And then she was, she like quoted something from this book. And I was like, put that on my wish list. And I think the next day someone happened to get it for me. I was like, yeah, I'm only like, I'm like 15 pages in, but I'm already like, I want to buy it for everybody. Um, after you read that, I want you to read Pleasure Activism by Adrienne Marie Brown. A same person. Yeah. Yep. I got a lot of books. Um, Adrienne Marie Brown is just, I, I just adore her as a whole. Um, and then just the way that she, I think it's just the way that she communicates things, but yeah. I think that you will like pleasure activism as well. Yeah. Oh, I bet. I bet. I already like, just like where she comes from in it, in the introduction. And she does the same thing that Bell Hooks does with the lowercase name, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. I think is really cool, which I'm mm -hmm. just obsessed with. Yeah, emergent strategy. Yeah. Emergent. Emergent. Uh, yeah, not American. Um, so I'm excited. I have a duet somewhere of it because I'm just supposed to say, oh, TikTok just brings you information. But I was thinking about, I actually was thinking about getting it for like the people. Oh, I, I like that. Right? Just because I just was thinking the whole time. I've only read the introduction or some of it because the introduction is 40 pages. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Which is not, I'm not a problem. I'm just that you said. Uh, stop. So. <laughs> the damn having, okay? I just. So, yeah, I was thinking about everybody there. It's like, just like the vibe of the introduction was very much. Uh huh. Shit. And I just, everyone who's gonna be I want them to like have this vibe I like that idea it's gonna be so I just like what we're doing but yeah the collective whatever mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. what it's called. but even talking about like generative conflict I was like that's the word <laughs> like I didn't even I'm just like excited about it so yeah that might be nice it'll be good I like that idea yeah like a thing I was, um, why not? Fuck, 
I had just that quick. I mean, it was here and Hi, gone. Circus Fairy. What was I going to say? I don't know. I was giving you time. I like, I, I gave, okay, wait, wait, hold on. Okay. Was it about, because I'm going to remind, stop talking. Um, <laughs> You're second, good at the what? Second, the second. <laughs> oh. I'm surprised that you even got that all the way out. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> I told you, I, I um, <laughs> we were talking about emergent strategy and collective something. Generative conflicts. I don't. Her name using lowercase. I went really far back. Me having great ideas all the time, like bringing it. Um, I think it's gone. Okay. <laughs> cool. Cool. Um, circus fairy, where if, if you're comfortable, where are you? Like in the in the bleh, country. I, because I was going to say globe, but then I was like, oh, she's probably in this country. And I was like, I shouldn't assume. And then I, my brain started. But I also like that you said globe instead of earth. <laughs> Is a globe? Hold on. Hold on. Is, I'll stay here. Okay. Is a globe only a So globe? global will define earth right but it's not it's not i don't think it's interchangeable to describe the planet i don't want to accept any of that so i'm just i think that you should just change it up and say we should have like where are you at in the globe i think that that's it made sense in my head i had that option i didn't even throw it away like no that's it it's one of those things where it makes complete sense. It's just another Rebecca-ism. And right, honestly... I also, I have an aversion to Earth right now. I'm, it makes me think of how terrible we are to it. You know what I'm saying? Totally. If I just say globe, then, you know, we're just acknowledging that it exists. But I don't want to talk about Earth because who named it? We're destroying it. We, I, You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of how I feel about the MLK thing. Oh my god. Like when I said died, it was for a fucking reason. And I didn't say murdered because it wasn't a fact. You know, like I even, I was even stronger in my stance after I got I did not mm -hmm. expect that. Mm -hmm. but of course men uh, was murdered. Oh, get out of here. The way Wait, that are you telling me he didn't die of natural causes at 39 years old? And you know that that, you know that that man, like the one that you did the video comment reply to, you know that he just felt that he was doing the right thing. And he, this is the thought process that went on. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge that I know that he was murdered. Like, you don't know that. Th that's why I'm like, who, that's why I was like, who is this for? <laughs> who is it for? And he's like, well, I didn't ar articulate it great. I didn't respond to that because like, whatever. And he's like, I'll take my lumps. So I'll take it for whatever. He's not doubling down. But he's not necessarily accepting it. But the other, there was another person like, well, it's important. That that's just a passive language of he died. It's passive. What, pa what are you even talking about? It's passive language to say someone died. What I don't are think we that, upset about? What, right. What, and I, also the other person that said, I'm taking my lumps, but then still continued why, why they said it. That's not taking your lumps. That's yeah, still right. trying to get that's somebody right. to believe you. That's like, some not great. That wasn't great. It wasn't I, there's been so much of that. Like, I, th I think I told you this when I was like, when I did the duets and I didn't say anything and people are coming with all of this stuff that they have to say, particularly um, on this platform, yeah. the uh, feminism post. And who boy, did people just prove that point all over that. But it's this need to say, no, 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 I know. I know exactly what's supposed to be said. And the way that it was said here is not right. And like, so you didn't receive anything from this message. Like the the intended message, you did not receive it because you, that's what it tells me. It's less, right. it's, it's, it's more so like, oh, you thought this wasn't for you. Right, right. Because there's no way you also took it in and then felt the need to be like, he was murdered. Because if you took it in, there is no way that was the point, was it? My point was literally not about that at all. Like, zero. 
It was more about, and even in the caption, humanized historical figures. One, because when I say died, people are almost upset that I'm not, I'm not acknowledged. You know how many people are murdered on a regular basis, by mm-hmm. the way? Like, mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. Do, like, I just, it, it puts more of this, like, magical Negro business out in the air to me when it's, yes. Like, we do it to white historical figures and in like a really perverse, gross way. And I think we need to be talking more about the ages of these white men when they wrote papers that we're supposed to care about now, right? hundreds of years ago. And like, I, why are we, okay, you know. That's a really good, that's a really good point. Like, like since, like when I listen to you talk about humanizing, it makes me think about so many things that I've like missed in other ways that just, that, that it doesn't happen because to say that somebody was murdered, then it becomes this big story. Yeah. And like you said, it becomes focusing on the person who committed now the a act. Victim of the, this the victim thing. of this person. And we talk about who did it right. and why they did it and X, Y, Z. And all that focus goes on the person that perpetrated the act. Not the fact that somebody died right. at such a young, at such a young age. That's what struck me. you said 39. I'm going to be 44 this year. I like, so It's also like putting yourself like, a, like, so that's also connected kind of to emergent strategy, right? Like Martin Luther King, we look, we, we, the second someone, I think it's also our issue with death. Like there's a combination obviously of things going on, mm-hmm. but when someone dies, we're like angel. They, they lit up a room. Right. Have you ever heard someone described as someone whose smile lights up a room when they're alive? It is in every documentary about someone who was dead and they are all of a sudden, they lit up every room they walked into. Not saying that doesn't happen, but sometimes they're just people, okay? They deserve to be talked about if they're just people. But our figures are like, it's like Malcolm X, MLK, and Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton was 21. So it's also looking at the amazing accomplishments that we you know, hold up here, but also realize they were they were just dudes too. So right. you can also, right? Like you can have impact. It's also supposed to be kind of twofold. Like they made us feel like we don't have any power. Mm-hmm. We just exist. We exist to work for other people, and like we, the adults are adulting. But meanwhile, John um, John Lewis was twenty one when he organized his first sit in, and it was like you know all the pictures and stuff. Like, we don't have any excuses, but at the same time, it takes time. And, like, you made, it's hard. You made a, like, okay, this is the point that just connected in my head. Not what I was going to say earlier, but this. So talking about these ages, John Lewis, 21, Fred Hampton, 21, um, Martin Luther King Jr., 39 when he died. Right. So at the work that he did before that. And so the bus, he was 21, 27 during the Montgomery bus boycott. 27. So we talk organizing. now. It's like a full circle moment. How often do we say the kids are going to save us? The kids have been doing it. Like, if, we, if you make that correlation, it's always going to be that youth, that bracket, that age bracket that's doing yep. the most impactful work. And impactful can go either way because the people that are wearing the white hoods, the people that are being out there being huge agents of the, the big WS, yeah, um, we're also that same age. So it's always that age bracket. It's what happens around it or what, what, what comes from that. Right. And it's, and it's always hindsight as well. Like the way people, white people talk about Martin Luther King now, they would not talk about if he was alive and they didn't talk about him like that then. Mm -hmm. Homeboy, whatever, whatever congressman was like, happy MLK day. And then like right afterward, like passed bills, like eliminating AP, African American history. So like, they don't even like him. Like, so we have to humanize Past figures, and I think that's why Aaron Hatmer. I was thinking about it. Hatmer, Hatmer is so is so impactful and funny. Is because she humanizes the experience of mm-hmm. like what was what is said to be happening at those times. Just like mm-hmm. they're just people. There were people, regular people there, just like viewing. They weren't like alien people without souls. They right. had other stuff going on too, just like you. So like we. It's it's like there's a lot there that we've just been conditioned that like it's just why even like it's just ugh. meanwhile also we have a vested interest in the future. Do these old white men care? Have they been shown to ever care? No. Young people are the ones who are like, well, in the future when I am able to act on my own, I want it to be you know livable. Right. Right. So us asking them is just like the dumbest fucking shit ever. 
We're like, oh, they've decided that the most important things are the things that were written by people that look like them hundreds of years ago, who also kind of also thought, just let's throw it in there, that half of the people here were not humans. Never changed their mind about it. Mm -mm. Never declared to have changed their mind about it. Literally no one, like, where in history, even the presidents who were like, legally said they weren't like you know what i believed mad wrong shit (laughs) (laughs) right never never it's so long ago it's not like that anymore what and they have they have no motivation to to believe anything different because staying status quo works for them right and they've been indoctrinated that everything else is scary everything is fear-based and us versus them so in some ways, I, I know it doesn't sound, it's not popular or sexy, but you kind of have to rehumanize that enemy as well. Oh, you absolutely have to. You know, but as much as I see, you know, I see self-righteous attacks on people like they're so stupid, they're so dumb, da, 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 da. You know, smart people get swept up in cults all the time. All the time. And so if you have not, to you... see them as humans too. Right. If you're not, and if you're not, then they just become this boogeyman, this, this, uh, yeah. villain and a horror story the monster under the bed the monster in the closet when in fact it's the person that lives next door to you it's the person that is at the grocery store with you it's a person that is like working with you it, it both sides of this both aspects need human beings yeah and it's like you know we talk about concept to cousin and then you know that's for us too Mm-hmm. But in, and in some ways, like, I think those of us who are more empathic have to sometimes, or like teaching this stuff, you have to turn cousins into concepts. And that's why, like, I can't do this work in person, really. Right, right. Because I see y'all, like, I'm a, I respond to emotions. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want people to be, I don't want to be uncomfortable. And mm-hmm. you're uncomfortable with what I'm saying. And now I'm uncomfortable. You know, I have to distance myself. I have to dehumanize a little bit. Mm-hmm. And talk about the messaging and the behavior. Mm-hmm. But that's not easy for Black women. Whereas for white men, that's the that's the first and only. Right. It's me overall. So, you know, uh, it's complicated. It is complicated. But it you compl- can change any time. It's never too late. I just saw lots of, like, the response, the comments are, You know, like it's funny, but there's so many white women like, I've done nothing with my life. And I hear you. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't want to, I don't, you know, I'm on TikTok. <laughs> do for anybody i don't know i and like i get like i'm not mad about it you know i don't read those and go like i'm mad but after a couple after a couple hundred no no i don't think it's that many but it was just like so so what are you gonna do yeah <laughs> like now that I you've identified and i was like oh i'm gonna do something right I don't know. that fucked me up he was 39 when he died fucked me up because it also was like, oh shit. What am I doing? You're, yeah. Chicago is Chicago way right now. I can't hear it. I've got my Alexa. Okay, on. good. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, someone, I think someone's just angry on the phone. I yeah. thought that was a fight. <laughs> it usually doesn't ever end up being a fight. They're usually just yelling. Just hyping up. That it's just, it's right. just yelling. And then they're walking away yelling still. There was, so in my, this is my bedroom window and there's uh, garages and like a parking area right over here. And last night, some people were just getting hype and just yelling back and forth and everything. And doors were slamming in my nosy ass. I can't actually see down there, but I was like, but then nothing happened. And my thing is like, if you're going to get that loud and that buck with it, then just do the damn thing. 
All that jaw jacking. Oh, it's uh, sometimes I used to look out and then I'd be I could just tell by who was yelling, ain't nothing gonna happen. Ain't nothing gonna happen. This white guy and then the manager at the laundromat, you ain't going against the manager at the laundromat. <laughs> He's going every <laughs> time. Every time. Oh, you just keep going, bro. You're wearing shorts. You're not. Can I, tell you, I was on the Twitter last night. Well, yesterday, whatever. And um Did you say the Twitter? Yeah. Is that you know, I that's know. just what I call it. Like, oh, like okay. I said, the target. I put a the in front of everything. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, but do you know that Ron DeSantis no. had black students, like a, a black band playing at the governor's mansion? It was saying, so great to celebrate Black History Month. Here's my favorite thing. Here's my favorite thing. I just saw, I, I literally in real time watched it click in your head. I just. <laughs> I saw all the pieces come together in your head and all of its nonsense. <laughs> like, can you, like, and we're supposed to be like, yes, let's, let's vote on. <laughs> Come march debate with this person. Oh my god. So here's the thing. So I saw someone and I, I think it's it's really unfortunate. Like so someone said their white family doesn't see them as human, even though you see them as human. I am not in the business of trying to convince anybody of my humanity. And I feel like it's a delicate balance. So I don't experience that. I'm very fortunate with my biracial experience that I didn't feel like my white family didn't care for me. I thought I felt loved. I was, we are special, okay? I feel like my presence was born of just don't tell us what to do energy from mm -hmm. like both were just like, yeah, I'm not in a cult, I'll do what I want. And then the other one was like, I'm Jewish and young, but I'm gonna get a tattoo and, you know, marry this guy. But there is something I learned like through business school and kind of like, you're not going to convince someone and that's just going to hurt you so much to be, to find, you know, don't try to get uh, bread from the hardware store. Mm -hmm. sure, right. Mm -hmm. But you see them as human and you are like, be open to them changing or like having a redemption arc. And I think, you know, you treat these people like they're in a cult because they are. They're mm -hmm. clearly, like, no rational person. Right. Get these blacks to do a little jig, then everyone will realize I'm not, I have no issue. You know, like, you just, we, you, you see humans and you're like, they're not human. That is not rational. Right. But for right. 400 years, you had to convince yourself that that was a rational thought. Mm hmm Do you know how much dehumanizing you have to do to yourself? So I've been also thinking about that. Like, it eats them from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Whereas I saw someone from Africa talking about, like, you know, we complain about not having resources or water or something. And I used to say Black people in America were just complaining. They're complaining. And, you know, they don't, they have all this, they have clean water, you know. But then realizing that people around you don't see you as human is just harder to right. understand or to see, to validate. It's like when people are like, I'd rather hate hit me because then I'm not gaslighting myself. I don't have other people gaslighting me, telling me, no, it's not happening. Whereas this insidious nature. So it's like white people are getting obviously impacted too, but it's, that's why they love these diagnoses. I think because it's like, that's why I'm hurting. It's not. It's not. I, these are all Drake Domania type vibes to me. Mm -hmm. like, oh, you don't want to live in this way? It hurts you to operate like we do? Let me help you. Here's, that's why. I mean, they've been making, you know, I'm, I'm sure, obviously, mental illness is real. I just want to also be mindful that Drake Domania was in science books. The, the runaway slave 
was had a mental illness because how could they possibly want to run away unless something was wrong with them mentally? Draped a mania. Mm-hmm. Wrote mm-hmm. it down, certified it, put down it is, it, it, black women are unrapeable. Put it in science. Mm-hmm. So question all of these things, you know, and I just, I'm just realizing the validation on, and being believed and like white women, I think have been, it's a very different gaslighting, but like, imagine there's no black people around. No one's telling them the truth ever. Everyone's always talking in subtext. And that, especially if you're like neurodivergent, right? I spent two years in this and I, but what? You right. know? So I'm, I'm humanizing that experience. Now I am not in the business of telling a hurt person to have feeling, have humanize me, I'm not going to convince them. I can see their humanity. I can be like, damn, you're fucked up. Right. But get the fuck away from me. Like, right. I, you know, like. You can humanize somebody else without begging them to humanize you. It doesn't have to be, and it will not always be an equal exchange. Right. And like thinking it, if you think about like, the amount of times that you've been told like not to um, not to beg somebody to love you or any of that other stuff like that, it, it's the humanizing. I just need to pause for a minute. This Joyce person said that people weren't as hateful and that they needed us girls 40 years ago. And what a few things wait, here. Wait, Number one, wait, they not a girl. 40 years ago? Not, not a girl. Um, Two women here, two grown women, two grown the women. I, I, there's a lot happening right now. And then there were people doing this, like we are doing this 40 years ago. The fact that you weren't listening to them is not our responsibility today. And then to say that people weren't as hateful 40 years ago, I need to know what existence you lived as to say that people weren't as hateful 40 years ago. Because that is a bald face lie. Bald face, bold face, it's a bold face lie. That. And also, okay, say that we're true. Say you believe that for real. It's today. It's today. Well, how is that helping today? It was better before. Better well, for who? Exactly. So it's not true, right? But say it was still not helpful. And we are alive right now. 40 years ago. That- all the time. Yeah, Braddy said that 40 years ago, and you think that was before we were born because you called us girls, or you know, like, I don't understand. I don't understand. 40 years ago, I was three. Joyce, your observation is not the reality of other people. Like, that's not. Observation. And it wasn't kept out of the spotlight. Okay, I need to, this, I'm going to make this very clear here, real quick, because I think that what happens is, is that white people that, white people that are my age and older believe that times before were easier and they were gentler and then people weren't as hateful. That's because there was not access to the internet where things were happening in real times. That's one reason why. That being they, said, people there was were a as hateful. It was just as it was just as bad. Nothing has gotten better. And to believe that things have gotten better or things have even gotten worse, I can I can maybe ascribe to that. Why are you even making observations here? Who asked? It's just like so many, so much superiority to be like, I want to tell you, you know, people are getting lynched like now. Today, we just had to pass anti-lynching lynching laws, what, two years ago? Barely. Last year? And, and, and like the last public, public one was in 1981. And it was like on the news. That was on the news. And we don't talk about it now because it's always, the past is always nostalgic. Right. Fuck your past. The rear view mirror is this small for a reason. And y'all be looking at it like, look at how far we've come. Yeah, because it's it's small and it makes it far back. Windshield. The windshield is where you need to be focusing. That's why it's so much bigger than the rearview mirror. You know? The front where you're going. I just, I don't, I don't like random statements thrown at me. Maybe that's what it is. Because I'm supposed to not like care about it. If, if this is where statements like that is it, it comes with a reminder it makes me want to get that reminder again that we are not here to be your therapist your clergy your priest or anything that you feel that you have to absolve yourself of 
That is not our responsibility. So when you have your individual experience and what you went through, that does not do anything for anybody because your universal, ex your singular experience is not a universal one. The way that you perceive something is not a universal perception. Your perception is your reality, but it is not the reality of the people around you, especially when oh, you're talking to two black women. Opinions and as facts. White people, y'all, opinions. So the person in my comments who was like, it's really important to discuss that he was murdered. I was like, to you. Yeah, to me, that's my opinion. I was like, that is your opinion. Exactly, so it's important. No. So that's your opinion. I don't, your opinion does not matter in spaces where no one asks. Julia, so do you're just wasting breath and time and space because mm -hmm. like if a tree falls in the forest, does anybody give a fuck about your opinion? That type of thing. You know what I'm saying? If no one is there to give a fuck, why are you saying it? You know, you should give a fuck about what we're saying. Right. Because it's we've also never been just... speaking before. No, it's also, it, you remember how, like, you just said this, here's a face. You said it earlier when you hear something and you're just not hearing the message. Hold on, Julia, I, I need you to have, like, a journal moment. Like, all this stuff that you're dropping in here, I'm glad that you're experiencing it. Yay for opening up your mind. Find someplace else for it, though. Um, but the whole not listening to actually hear the message, but listening so that you have something to say right behind it. It's that listening to respond, that listening right. to say something. And when it comes to doing work like this, um, something that has become glaringly obvious to me is that white people, when trying to separate from, when trying to divest from whiteness, they become such people pleasers that they have to give all this information. Look at what I'm doing. Look at what I've learned. Look how far I've come. This is what I used to do, but I'm really, really better. I'm really, really better. Okay, but you don't have to prove that to individual people to make the difference. Because if that's the case, if you don't get the approval that you're looking for, if you don't get the accolades that you're looking for, if you don't get the pat on your head saying you're doing such a good job, you're going to get your feelings hurt. And then as a response, you will act out and stop doing anything that you've been doing. Right. So if your work is only to be praised, if your work is only to be lauded on how good you're doing, then you're not doing it for the right reason. You should not need to be, you should not need to be praised for the work that you're doing. It, it should, should take a minute. Part Yes, it's part, of, it should become part of your lifestyle. That's when we say like being an active anti-racist is not just a title you give yourself and say, look, I did a good job. That that signifies that there's a completion to this journey yeah. and there's no completion to it. You're going to continue to do it and you cannot expect the praise. I said this on a video the other day, if your activism is only based off of somebody that you're friends with, or you have to be friends with the people that you say that you're supporting, it is so conditional because the minute the friendship dissolves or goes a different way, then what happens? And then it's actually like reverse. Really, now you're in, you've got some secrets, someone let you in, and now you're going to hurt them. It's, With those very it's secrets. Never, it's never just a silent back away, is it? It's I'm being attacked, now I'm going to cry. And instead, I think just fight that urgency that you feel to correct someone's mis misunderstanding of what you were trying to do. Trust us. We know what you were trying to do. We are saying it because we know what you were trying to do. It's mm -hmm. just not what happened. Mm -hmm. So just take a couple minutes because how can you be answering already? If this is brand new information to you. Brand it new. Should take, it should take some thinking. And white supremacy tells you right now matters right now. It matters right now. It just, you gotta take a beat. Right. And really ask yourself, is this opinion I have a fact because if it's an opinion i should just hold on to it because in this space i'm listening if i'm providing an opinion i'm doing it wrong mm -hmm. then i think this is something they haven't thought of one never the case if you are white and you're walking into a space with black women and they are speaking and you're like well did they consider this don't do it don't now i know you're trying to be helpful but we have limited time. And what we try to do is just, that's what you see, just like I'm just always trying to spit information out because I don't know how long I'm gonna have your attention mm -hmm. or how long I'm gonna be able to keep doing this or how long TikTok is gonna let me do this or, you know, when the planet explodes or something. For any, like any number of things. Right. I just like fight that innate urge to do it the way you've always done it too. Like, well, I, I, they don't understand. I'm gonna tell you because we do. It's we as know you. As... We know everything about you. Right. That's and, why we're and, talking and be to open you. to that. Yeah.
we wouldn't be here doing this. Like, do you think it's, it's like, this is fun. I really enjoy being spoken to as if I'm a child who knows nothing aside from the words I just said. Like, he was murdered. Martin Luther King was actually murdered. You don't say. You don't say. It's just that, like the math never ever makes sense to me to say that you are so excited to learn something, but then feel this need to talk over who you say you want to learn something from. I love it. It's so like, we need to listen to them, guys. And I'm like, exactly. Then, you know, guys, she's talking. We need to listen to her. And I'm like, okay, thank you. Whoa, hey, hey, everybody. You're not listening. She's talking. You're not listening to her. And I can never get anything out. No. So it's like, you see how you boomerang back to being racist? <laughs> like, just that quick. It didn't take any time at all. If you overdo it, it's still because you're you're not operating. You haven't had your ego debt. You haven't been knocked down to realize, oh, I don't know shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. It's the overcorrecting. It's still in some way. It's it's still robbing you and robbing us of our voice by const by loudly telling people to shut up. And then when we say thank you, and no, I'm just correcting them for you. And then when I'm like, hey, can you can you let me speak now? It's like, wow, I'm just trying to help. I was telling, I agree with you. I agree with you. Wow, this is what you do when you we support. Okay, I'm not. I don't need to support you anyway because I don't like people who. Blah, 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 blah. How often? And looped right back to that whole. I'm only doing this because I like you. And that's a, another beautiful point. So so many people will say like, I like the way that you teach, but I don't like the way that they teach. And my que and my, my question in my mind is like, why? If the information yeah. is the same, if you want to learn or not, right? Like get get your feelings out of the way. Now, if it's something in the way that, and I'm I'm, I'm like allowing a little bit of grace because some people can learn and from different learning styles, but the complaint is always, I don't like the tone that they used. Yeah. I don't like the way it just seemed too sarcastic. If you were learning from a black woman about the experiences of black people, then why do you expect us to be happy? Right. And if we find a way to be sarcastic and still do this and still find humanity in you, although for centuries we have been treated, treated as less so while being relied on for life. And trying to tell you all about yourselves and you're like, no, it's not like that anymore. And for, for centuries. And then, because, you know, even when Black people were enslaved, there were white people saying they've had enough. They, progress has gone too far. Mm -hmm. When they wanted to, like, you know, read. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. was like, we've given them enough. It's never been, the, progress has always been at the forefront of the white mouth. It's been so much progress. We've made so much progress. Mm -hmm. According to the people... But you you said something just now that made that that clicked something in my head. You know, we talk about um, we talk about how we don't owe anybody anything, right? And I know that um, some people really just buck back against that, which is a whole nother conversation because to think that you're owed something by somebody else is something. But um, the people that will come and decide to learn from us or be in this community with us they immediately go into that mindset of I'm owed this. And that's still that mentality of thinking that we are still in ways enslaved, right? right. Like, and you are entitled. Entitled to it. Because it, we have created something. Because we decided to do something, now you're entitled to it. You're entitled to full access to it and to speak however. And if there are consequences, that should not happen because it's they made it. They made it. And it's for us now. You are the, you, us. You, your name is White Woman Whisper. Why aren't you? Do you the entitlement behind? I made this. I created a name, and now white people take the name, weaponize it at me to tell me what that means. Tell me about the progress again, and then ask to borrow me for their kid. Oh my God, that and see no irony at all. Even when I say, "Really, borrow me," Let and me kept give you all going. The context clues. And kept this is going. 
And it was all just to tell me, I think, just to tell me that she didn't like my name because it offended her. Uh huh. And she did it. She did it though. She did it by the way. I meant like, I'll, like imagine weaponizing your kids too as a way to say, I don't like the name that you chose for your platform. My kid is fifteen, but you're the white woman whisperer, so I wanted you for my fifteen year old because she's got hormones coming in. You know what it made? That made me think about like, remember that video that I did with uh, what people expect from content creators, and then mm -hmm. like the different responses and the yeah. way that people responded were so interesting because um, some people were like responding with what they want to see. Um, and then some people were responding with what they actually expect. And somebody said, you know, I expect to see videos one to two, three times a week. And I was like, you better never expect another. See, but some of those videos, some of those comments made, some of those comments made the point that I was trying to make yeah. as these expectations. Hey. Hi, Sunny. This expectations that are there, like just because, just because people have decided to do this, and I will even take it further than black women doing anti-racism education or black people doing anti-racism education, because people have decided to present something does not mean that you are owed anything, even if you follow them. So, I don't know why. Like, change that mindset. It's, it's it's like you know what I mean. We're not we're not paid to do this. Right. We're not under contract we don't owe you we didn't sign a magical white man paperwork that said must commit we don't we're not signed to tiktok tiktok does not contact me ever um <laughs> i want a sweatshirt damn it i see people with sweatshirts on they just contact me to invite me to join another oh i saw spot. that i didn't even open it i was so fucking pissed join the be in the beta for a creative shut and but here's the one thing that I guess I could kind of like acknowledge is said that you will be paid based on the video's performance. And I'm like, <laughs> did it? See, I didn't even open it. I saw that you posted it. I was like, I can't because you know how. And then if you join it, you can't go back to the creator fund. Okay, first of all, fuck, if you fuck join this. the beta. And the, and the two years, in the two years that I've been in the creator fund, I showed this before you. Um, In the two years that I've been the creator fund, I've made less than $800. So if anybody thinks I'm being paid by TikTok, no. It's, and it's strategic. There's a reason why. Because, you know, content's not being pushed. Right. And that's why I'm saying let's let's defy capitalism and do things mm -hmm. we would normally do. Like pay people even though they aren't, it isn't mandatory in order right. to get the education. Because you know that we don't get paid. So I want us to you know, work those anti-capitalist muscles, even us. Like I had to go through, and I still do, random bouts of like, of trying to, starting this like, oh, I should monetize it because why would I just give all of this information away for free? And then realizing mm -hmm. it's in my best interest to do this for free because more people being better people is better for me. I feel better. One, you'll actually watch it because it's free. But at the same time, I'm hoping that through learning, you realize what the right where where value should lie and how much is a dollar really worth here versus here. And like sometimes it's a lot, sometimes it's a little. And like making active choices to not value what white supremacy tells us to value, hoarding, 401k vibes, acting like this is still gonna be the system in 40 years. What if it's not? What are you investing in? What's a stock? Don't the answer that. I went to business school. I know what a stock is. But honestly, okay, this invisible thing, because I can't even be like this. It's not even this. Mm -hmm. This has value to me. <laughs> this, this thing is how well we think with all the projections between today and the past, what we think in the next bunch of years, when we assume the past for the future, today's worth of the future monies is up. Oh, Elon Musk tweeted about weave. Never mind. <laughs> Zero dollars. We didn't see that. No. Nope. We didn't see that in the past, so we didn't know to include that in the projections. Oh, COVID happened. Like, instead, focus on what's actually valuable to you in your life, your time your energy, your presence. These are not easy things to get a hold of. <laughs> but with them, you can be impactful and feel like you're leading a life that has purpose. Mm -hmm. And I know it's easier said than done. I This is where I'm trying to find something. Martin Luther King was 39. 
when he was done with all the stuff we know about. That's what I meant when I said what we know about. Adorable. That's what I meant when I said when he was done with everything. I didn't mean he was done with his life. Right. I mean, kind of, but not on purpose. I just meant like everything we've heard about, all the like glory that is Martin Luther King happened, was done before he turned, he was 39. So what excuse do we have? Like, oh, security. Is there security in working for corporate America? People, I remember Google was the job. Get a Google job. Mm-hmm. We work at Google. We work at Facebook. We work at Google. We work at Facebook. And it was like, do they? That do they still? Anymore. Do they live a life you want? You know, 401k, what happens to that? Do you feel secure? What if that company just doesn't exist anymore? Right. What do they do with your money? Right. Do you know? Nobody <laughs> knows. Nobody knows, but because money I'm gets, sure they're going to be fine. The money gets thrown fine. at it. You have no idea. No, t- nothing tangible to take from that. I'm itchy. Nothing tangible to take from that, but just money thrown at it. And what what can you say? I was able to create. I was able to post the status of Facebook for all of my high school friends to come through and show me how much they've been stunted since high school. Like, mm. but it's you know the goal isn't hoarding. It isn't to be Jeff Bezos. Do you want a billion dollars so everyone hates you and you can't even fit a billion dollars in the house? It's all imaginary. So would it help you in an apocalypse? Just pretend we could possibly. Be in an apocalypse type situation. What is valuable? Communication skills, service worker skills, patience, knowing how to make food and clothes and blankets. I always say blankets because I, that's the one thing I know how to make. Can knock one of those out in like a day or two. I can, I can make blankets. We can trade shit. Hey, J. Crumb. Hey, J. Crumb. Like, I saw there was something was buy nothing. Dang it, I forgot what it's called. But they're working like on this. They just trade stuff. You don't buy anything. And yeah. It's like this online app, and it's just people all over. And I'm really excited that that idea is taking off. But it's just like we have to wake up and remember this isn't destiny. Like we weren't supposed to do this. Can we stop? And don't expect the people who love it like this to be like, yeah, we can stop. They gonna keep doing it. Of course you're going to do that. Let them let him keep going to that building. And bang, 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 bang. if no one's there to listen, does it make a sound? Stop showing up to the things where they're going to say shit that is only designed to piss you off so that you don't spend time listening to Black women. Because mm-hmm. you're tired. Mm-hmm. You're exhausted and you feel hopeless. And what's the point? And everyone is just fucking stupid and racist. You're just going to go into bed. I do it regularly. But every once in a while, you got to remember other people existed, like, who did stuff about it. And, like, what did, what excuse? Be the change you want to see and stuff, you know? It's, I mean, there's just, there's, it's just a matter of looking beyond your, your own individual existence. It's a matter of looking beyond yourself, right? It's. And how you personally impact people the ripple effect like what like what what are you doing and, and the right. way that you're responding to other people what are you showing other people it has an impact what everything like everything that you do even the thing that you think is the most benign statement has a ripple effect of some sort and if you want your ripple to be a ripple of hate and bigotry and ignorance don't be mad when that shit comes back because it's an ebb and flow it it, it truly is mm-hmm. and i think that like I think that's that's what's wild is this energy that people want to put out there, right? This energy of um, even if they just consider it just stopping what they feel is is useless or pointing at somebody else, like that's what you're putting out there, and then you can't understand why you are still walking around in this negative existence. Look at what you've done. Look at what you've contributed. Are right? you helping or hindering progress? Mm-hmm. Is when you speak up to someone who is trying to do something good. And you could tell, the only reason they're speaking is because they want to do something good. Like you have to be thinking about why other people are speaking. And then you say something. Is that something helping or hindering? Because it's only doing one of the two. One of the two. It's only doing one of the two. There is no neutral sentiment that you are providing in a situation where you're going up to a stranger and saying things to them. Mm -hmm. You have an impact, period. 
hundred percent of the time when you interact with another person, what is it going to be? Cause I feel like people do this intention impact situation, but it's like, if you stepped into a comment section and then you said a thing and then a bunch of people said, Whoa, this is wrong. That's the impact that you said something that made a bunch of people upset. Mm -hmm. That's what you should be looking at. Not, well, I said, what I said was, Right. And why I said it, because she had said this in the video. I mean, you could do all that. You could do all that, but that's that's just further proving that you missed the entire message. And all you were doing was pay, like picking out the specific words. And as we all know, worship of the written word is what? Oh, it's a pillar of white supremacy. Like this need to, to, to just try to make sure everybody's perfect. And when they're not, and when, like you said, when you call it, it doesn't make it any better to just keep defending that. Like, right. Just like accept and be like, whoa, I clearly messed up. I've had someone do that. Like, I, I clearly messed up. Yeah. Um, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to sit on it and read the comments that come in. I've had one person to say that. And that like, is the best type of response. Acknowledge that you, like, because you're going to fuck up. I just, I want people to realize this too, because it, letting go of that perfection, perfection is another pillar of it, but letting go of the fact that you're going to get everything right, especially if you were just starting this, if you have just decided to start this journey, then you're going to fuck up. And if you fuck up, that's fine. But acting as though you didn't, and then trying to explain why you didn't, and in that explanation, further fucking up. Right. That is so exhausting. Think of all that that you have to now work through. Right. Like, and like, if you know you're gonna mess up, we're saying when you mess up. It's a win. It's not gonna feel wrong. Like, I think why people expect to feel wrong when they're wrong. Yeah. Because if they don't feel wrong, they're not wrong. Yeah. You know? And it's, you're not gonna, you never feel wrong. Bad guys don't think they're bad guys. But you have to be willing to accept that other information can exist that you're not aware of and just whoop, accept it. I've had someone say, hey, could blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no. And then I said, fair enough. Love it. That I looks back to, you to say some weird shit. That very, that very thing you. that you said about like yeah. needing to feel wrong is looping back to humanizing yourself. Yes. yes. You, you have to humanize yourself. You have to recognize that things are going like nobody, nobody, there is not a single person that is on this globe <laughs> that, <laughs> See, that was natural to me it's the word <laughs> that was placed here with with without the ability of being wrong everybody gets something wrong at some point in their life and it happens often that's just what happens because we are forever learning new things if you're not learning new things like, I'm sorry for you. You were not you, Portia. But when was the last time you were wrong? You should ask yourself that. Yeah. I want. I have a post that I just haven't. Well, now that I'm private. Well, I'm gonna go back private. I'm public like right now, but I'm gonna go back private. Um, just because it's annoying. When did you go public? No, just like for the live. Do you have I to go public to, for the live? I'm gonna. You don't have to, but it's annoying because of people come and then they go to my page and it's private, and then I have got to go it. Like got it. Got so, it. Got it. So I just think I'll try and remember that if I feel like it. Um. Yep. That's, I, I did that to you. Yeah. I'm surprised it hasn't happened up until this point, to be honest. Um, <laughs> somebody said being the bad guy in somebody's story. It, here's the deal. Um, everybody's perception is their own reality, right? I think that it's important to recognize that your perception is your reality. And then you have the choice to see the reality beyond yourself. And while you might be the bad guy in that story and somebody else's story, that does not necessarily mean that you are a bad person in general. That means that an interaction that you had with somebody did not go as well for also, them the as it did might not for be you. Over. You know, right. like stories don't just end at the end of the individual interaction. I have people on here that I feel very close to only because they fucked up and yeah. then came back later. Like later. Later. That's important and is the later. Later. And said, and and they come back and they I feel I can tell they feel better because they come in, they talk to other people, you can see that they are comfortable. They survive it. They survive it and they're like, oh shit. And now I see them. And I'm like, hey you. And now I probably never gonna yell at them again just because I like them now. Right. That's so <laughs> like you said like so, the important thing. When you get something wrong, and I think that 
I think that it's important for people to recognize, especially white people to recognize that if you receive feedback, and I said this before, feedback is a gift. And if you receive feedback in the form of a video response, it is also a gift because it is something that you get to keep, you get to refer back to, you get to go and say, oh shit, this is what I said. This is how, this is a response that I got. This is what I need to keep working on. But you have to do it later. But if you are given feedback, if you are told that something that you did hurt somebody and your instinct is to respond right away, that you are caring about yourself and not the other person because you have not taken a moment to recognize this is why I hurt them. This is why I was wrong. This is why this was not beneficial. This is where I can do better. If you don't think about that. Between an immediate sorry that's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, versus I'm sorry, I clearly fucked up. I'm going to think about it. Like it should take. You should think about it because if not, you're going to do the same thing. Oh, who froze? Did Rebecca freeze? Is she frozen for anybody else in here? Okay, I wonder if she got a phone call. (laughs) What a screenshot that is. Oh no. (laughs) We lost her, I wonder if she got kicked. I'm gonna stay on here to see. I don't like how close I am to the screen now with just one of us. She just, oh, wait, she's back. I did it. My internet. Your internet died? It's it's something. And I'm on my iPad. So, you know, I couldn't do the, like, turn it off, the Wi-Fi. So I moved closer to it. Yeah. Hi. Mechanic. I'm basically a mechanic. You kind of froze like this. (laughs) Oh. We were like. You froze for me, and then and then you started moving again, and then you were like, who's frozen? I was like, fuck, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> and I swore it was you, because you froze, and then I was like, la, 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 and you were like, what happened? So. <laughs> and then, like, whoop, gone. <laughs> but I remembered what I was going to say before, because I knew y'all were going to come through and remind me. Yes. Um, that I had a post that I didn't post, because I thought people were going to, thank you, were going to be, um you know, how they are uh, back when I was public, but it's just like, stitch this with the last time you changed your stance on something. Oh. But I definitely did not want some random racist like, I used to think black people were safe and now they're not, or something, you know what I mean? Right. So, but now that I'm private, when I go back private up to this live, maybe I'll post it. But like, people should but- be thinking, like when was the last time I received new information and like changed my mind? about something I never expected to change my mind about. Britney Spears, I feel so, I just remember watching the thing and I was like, oh my God, we were terrible. Mm-hmm. Random, Justin Bobby, mm, that, so that's what I put in my caption. I was like, Justin Bobby. hear me out, hear me out. Was he just neurodivergent and honest though? Yeah. You got to rewatch it because I rewatched it and I was like, Ugh. and then I rewatched it again. And I was like, I say that. You know, what? Like, I think, I think I do need to, re- I think I do need to rewatch it because the, <laughs> I watched it for like the first time was when I watched I, yeah. it. So it, I had like first, well, you know, I, like I'm going through it now with watching um, Vanderpump Rules. Vanderpump. But I don't think that's not ever see uh, that the amount of. No, 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 no. no, no. But that's anyways, just, but yes, but yeah, like you can change your mind about something like, oh, opinion on Callie on Grace and Brady, that's a whole, okay. But yes, like be but willing. See, but even those, like they can be fun, but uh-huh. it's like, hey, look. Yeah. If you had a strong opinion on something and now you changed that, that's good. But in America, no, 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 no. We still agree with the men's. We still have, they're in our mountains. In our mountains. They're in our mountains. Okay, we are so still we using to... the words that these men, 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 are, like how old were out. these men when they were making these decisions for us in 2023? Would we trust men of that age right now? Would we have trusted men of that age if they, we, it was on a floppy disk? Would we use that document? 
Or would we be like, I think we can update it. I just like, it's all stupid to us if we're thinking straight, but we were indoctrinated into thinking that this is the thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just so insidious, I think, that we've gone this long and thought like, well, you know, cause that's why Martin Luther King and it's like those people, I think they had, it was almost like it was less denial, right? Cause it was mm -hmm. like clear, it was in the laws. Like black people are less than white people. So you could clearly and easily be like, no. Right. Now, and now we're, we're just all passing like, we're equal. What are you doing but here? passing all these laws and, and redlining places and food deserts and um, heavily policing certain neighborhoods. All that is, is just taking what was once legal and finding a way around it. Nothing has changed. Nothing right? has Except changed. Except for our awareness of it. That's what it is. It's the awareness. And our ability to see outside of it. Like, it's been so long. But now, so what happened was, in, in the cult models, like, what they, what they restrict is your, like, your body, your information, the bite model, body information, thoughts, and emotions. So most, a lot of that can be done by just, like, taking up all your time. Mm -hmm. You taking up all your time that you barely eat. You don't have time to really just like think about it. You just constantly, constantly, constantly. That's why they want you in the office because when you have time, then you can get access to information and the internet. So the internet fucked up the cults. I hold on the it's information because so now it's free and we're talking to each other and we're like, Oh my God, information. So we're all breaking kind of the other stuff too. Cause we had time to sleep and, and think thoughts. And our emotions, we had emotions they couldn't control because you mm -hmm. know, we're on fucking TV and stuff. So that it makes sense that we're all becoming more aware. But I think looking at it in the cult model will be better for people than just like, what's happening? I think the question, like a question I have too is like, why, what? what? People are like, like, learning about this is so hard. It's so hard. It, it, sure. But why does that, why is that scary? Why is learning about, I guess, I guess it's that humanizing thing again. Like I just can't, I can't imagine being afraid to learn what happened to large groups of people, what's still happening to large groups of people and well, what, what I can do to be a of, difference of it. They don't know what they're scared of, but they're scared of their whole world crashing. Because the, without the the certainty, so it's all America is also like a cult of certainty. Mm -hmm. They need to know what to expect. I mean, look at what happens when. If I say the way things are are shitty, some of the people's first responses, white women, a lot. What it will be like? What will it look like? What will it be? No one knows the future, but there's this this projection from white men that like this is what's going to happen. Like they always are forecasting and saying it so clearly as if that's the truth right? and say it enough and enough and enough. And then we just go with it, assuming that they know something we don't. Mm -hmm. They don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to look like. Did you know like that COVID was going to happen? Did you know what this year was going to look like? Were you better prepared for it? Because no, do today, look at today and be like, I hate it. Someone says, we could have something different. Let me be interested first and realize there's like billions of us. So like one person doesn't need to know how everything's going to lay out. They, those forefathers didn't give a shit what it was going to look like. They were like, this is great for us. And then we kept it for 400 years. Somebody just said so many of us have trauma too connected to wanting certainty. Some of us had trauma too connected to wanting certainty. I don't get it. Like, I understand religion is, like, it's all a part of certainty. Yes, you, yes, but there's no such thing. No one is certain. Like, so even the security that's supposed to come with working in corporate America, I did the thing, right? I'm the first gen and I'm also, I wanted security. All I wanted was to be safe. I just wanted to grow up and feel safe. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't from a racial lens. It was from mm -hmm. a financial lens. Because mm -hmm. I didn't think racially I was going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. So I just grew up thinking like everybody else, like y'all. And I was like, I just want to be comfortable. I don't want to have to 
need for or want. I want to get what I want. So I did the things. And I went to the school and I went to the corporate Fortune 100 company. And look at me now. There was no safety. I wasn't safe. I wasn't secure. Along the way, I felt secure. Every time mm -hmm. I made a decision that got me to that thing, which mm -hmm. I was told would be the awesomeness, mm -hmm. the, white, the white capital success, I was successful. I did every step along the way. I was like, okay, because I'm getting to the place where I will feel comfortable. Right. Am I comfortable? No. But I was going to be. Then you realize you get there and you're like, bam! don't come here don't come here and that's all i wanted to do at first was <laughs> announce to every black woman don't do it yeah especially younger than me don't get in corporate america especially if you think the world is equal do not do it and now it's become a much bigger thing <laughs> but now you know, now now it's like the tagline <laughs> you're not secure those white men's ain't gonna help you having 911 available to you makes you feel like you're gonna be safe does it does it lead to safety? Do they find the people? No. If you call 911 and there's a scuffle, you are likely to be detained. Right. And you you're are also to calling... be traumatized by those people. You're also calling 911 after the thing has happened. It's just after not a... the it's... thing has happened. We could do so much better. Imagine some black women come up like, hey, get in the house. Done. Done. No guns needed. Have some black moms driving around the town. Done. They got some dads in schools. It's black, of course. And, and it's making such an improvement. Mm -hmm. All we need is a collaborative community. Mm -hmm. It don't have to be present value of figures from the future. And also, if you consider the, the infrastructure and recession. People also, communities generally, for the most part, people respond better to, um, to restorative, like restorative care. Yeah. As opposed to just being tossed away somewhere else right transformative justice like let's actually act like all these humans are humans mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in what world would we ever say hey anyone who's had any kind of offense to anyone should go to the same place which is just a building where they are in trouble a lot and we all know it doesn't work we know that the people protecting them are abusing them selling them things bringing them drugs they're running their own gangs at some point, we got to wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. And the people going to work there have to stop going to work there or start working with people. You know, like, we are the levers, too. And then people act so shocked when they're, when people are released, when formerly imprisoned people are released and they have no concept of how to survive in the world because they've been taught nothing. It's like, okay, so you got caught doing something bad, which yeah. we've had this conversation. It's always going to, it's... 99.9% .9 of the time, it's going to come back to some sort of lack of resource or at, resource or access to care or therapy or something along those lines. So mm -hmm. then you, you get caught doing something bad. We put you in this place where you are now kept in a box for 23 hours out of the day. You work for less than nothing. You get fed terrible shit. You're abused. You are sexually assaulted. All of these things. And then when, when somebody has decided that you have spent enough time in that box they throw you back out into the world without a single resource and then are surprised when a person does the same thing because that's all that they know. They're not, and now it's, it's survival. they're not surprised, but it's because they attribute it to their lack of personhood instead of the treatment they've right. received. They should have learned something while they were locked up. Really? Really? It's just, it's patently wrong. We don't do it to dogs. I, at this point, like, we don't do it to dogs. So no, we, if we lock up a dog, if a dog is locked up, they're immediately thrown on an internet site somewhere so somebody can come get them. Yeah. Not that I want dogs to be treated like we're treated. I'd like to be treated as a good dog. Yeah, make sure, yes, exactly that. Go start there, according to y'all. But it's definitely humanizing the people in their roles. The so people who go, my hands are tied because of the rules. Stop. We need to just talk to people about the fact that the rules are made up. And the fact that you can have a rule that exists 20 feet away that does not exist here, that could mean your life in prison and traumati traumatizing you and your family for the rest of your life when you are sent to prison or nothing. Right. 
So is it for good or is it just for rules? It's clearly for rules because this is based on white supremacy and managing other people. But respect would acknowledge that every person has agency and like there's not one group of people that is going to inherently be able to control. The whole officer thing blows my mind. I don't like when we, when I see people with officer, 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 his name is Steve. Call him Steve. So he remembers his name is Steve. And that he's not a fucking officer. Right. But that, cause that, that is language matters. And who you are matters. You are not your job. People are not their professions. Call, we need to call each other by our first names. And then everyone's like, well, what about black women? Why do you now care about that? How about, how, about, how often are you speaking to black women? Right. If it's a lot, then I'm sure you're not asking this question. And if you heard the actual message, if you heard the actual message as opposed to what about. Right. The, the what about isms, I swear. It's like quicksand. Like, uh, uh, so I could provide you this original thought that, that came from my brain, from my lived experiences and my reading and my understanding and my interactions with you and your first thought is, well, what about this specific situation in which that doesn't count? I want to punch you in the face. I'm going to punch you right in the face. I'm going to punch Just you in your whole ass face. Square in it. But, you know, that's why I'm, I'm ready to talk about, like, what's next, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, humanizing us as creators. So that's what I wanted to talk about when we meet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is, like, look at us in the same space. Because we right. exist as humans who walk on the ground and go outside and go to grocery stores and have had lives before and are making this choice purely because we want to. This is not a, an attention grab. It would be the worst. It, it, you know, we've been doing this long enough that it's clearly something we're passionate about, have credibility in, have helped people. So mm -hmm. we shouldn't have to do more to manipulate funds or resources. But at the same time, we have a ton of resources in the people. Right. And like, I remember saying that, you know, I, even just the whole, when I like wrote on myself and I was like, it's Sharpie, I can't get it off. And I was just connecting and everyone was like, alcohol, coconut oil. <laughs> like immediately, <laughs> like all the suggestions. I am for free, right? So I remember, I have to remember that sometimes when I start freaking out about that security and that safety, I have to remind myself that's not real anyway. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, 17,000 people could sign up for my Patreon, right? And I could be now knowing I should, which, you know, whatever, $17,000 a month. That's still not going to make me feel safe to go outside. Right. Um, but it would help me do things that would eventually help me make things feel safe. But the people right now is where I want to focus, like refocusing the fact that we are resources in ourselves. In ourselves, exactly as we are. Exactly as we are. As we yeah. are. As I present my information on TikTok now for free, I have made a shit ton of impact factually. Already, without posting anymore. When Leslie sent that to me, like in the beginning, she was like, you could stop making videos right now and you would have had such an impact right? already. And this was like a year ago. And it was just, yeah. Yeah. It's Thank like, you. Yes. And, you know, like, I will always talk about the way that, that like, you reframe the language of the investment part of it and then the time piece of it. And, you know, like you said, we could stop making videos right now. And, and so many people would have been impacted by it. And the videos are still there so people can still come back to it. But being able to invest in the person that you learn from, the person that you enjoy learning from, the person that you have shared what you've learned from with other people, investing in that allows us to get to this level of comfort where we can live and do this, but then also be able to take the necessary breaks that we need. That's the point I'm getting to is that sometimes, yeah. sometimes... Sometimes it's a struggle to do content because I'm just tired. Like life is just life, right? Yeah. And but in my mind, I'm also thinking, and this is my own shit that I have to unpack. But in my mind, it's like I have to make sure that I'm still out there. I have to make sure that people are still coming back. I have to make sure that people still want to see me. And as part of being like a true investment, it's like you get to invest in the work that's there that you know is coming back. But yeah. if that person needs to take a couple of days to take a couple of days that they're not worried, that they're actually resting on those couple of days, that they're not yeah. taking a couple of days, but then still freaking out and saying, how much content do I have to do when I come back to make sure that I'm still making an impact, to make sure that people still want to see it, right? right. So 
subscribing to a Patreon again allows that kind of comfort because then it becomes did she freeze again? Oh my God. Are you there? Oh, okay. You am I back? Did he come yes, back? You're back. You're back. Okay. I think there's going to be a delay now. It's going to have to catch up. To, oh. oh. <laughs> Somebody please take a screenshot of this right now. Please. Please. I remember what my thought is. I'll keep talking. She'll come back to it. But the 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 point is, is that when you have when you have somebody that is um investing in your Patreon, are you there? Yes. Okay. You're back. That was so weird. I just like tapped my face and then I pressed save and then I came back. Press save. What was the save? Yeah. As a, like when you're joining and it's like, yes. Um, I, I don't we got know, a couple good, we got a couple good screenshots. But I was saying oh, like the course. Patreon is like let's look at this. So Rebecca, you have two hundred and eighty five thousand followers. I have hundred and seventy six, something like that. If half of the people that followed us gave one dollar a month to the Patreon we would be able to comfortably continue doing this work, build out on the work that we're doing, but then also have security and knowing that we're okay. Because at the end of the day, like we know that capitalism is made up and it's bullshit, but it's also still very real. Like as yeah. much as I hate money, as much as I hate bills, yeah. as much as I hate, they're still real, they're still there. And we still I would love to be able to live in a in a doorman building with yes. this work. Honestly, to me, that would be my, and I remember telling Jamal this, it would be my first big investment because I get nervous. You know, I would be more comfortable saying my name. Like, I want to be, I want to write and shit. So mm -hmm. I want to be able to be me, me, mm -hmm. you know, like tell you my stories personally. Um, but I get nervous about my identity being out there because... Because people are people. Who's actively looking to get me, <laughs> like right. Somebody threw me. my somebody tried to throw my information out there. Like there's all these things. So security is not. It's it's more security is more. Security than, is like my my feet. I guess like my. But it costs a lot in Chicago. It does cost a lot. Have a doorman building. Yeah. Yeah. To have a, like to just have that kind of protection. But these are just little small. Like it's, I don't you like using the word small, but it's it's a small but mighty impact that you can make. Right. As part of appreciating what you're getting, you know, like, yeah. So someone said, can I just give $12? Yeah, but it's not that funny. So here's the thing, $1 a month, I got that. But it's, it's less about the amount of money total. And it's more about the future. Yes. It's about knowing. Are you investing in your future? Because I don't know month to month who's going to decide to give me $12 or not. So mm -hmm. I have to assume no one's going to give me anything because sometimes mm -hmm. that happens. So, it, but if I have on Patreon, at least I know what kind of rent I'll be able to pay. Right. Mostly, that's my, that's my other main concern is because if I got to get a new place, what am I going to show them? Right. I'd be like, TikTok gave me three hundred dollars last year people are nice sometimes during june <laughs> june and february june is my month <laughs> february has been lackluster june? Uh, okay can, can we talk about this black history month has been hell people have been like people it seemed like some people were just I waiting during black history month we're just waiting for february 1st to be like i I'm going to be extra racist this time of year. Like it was a it was a lot. This year was a lot. But yeah, so that was my point about Patreon and subscription-based services. And I want more creators to kind of, and I was happy when I saw Aaron did it, is like it kind of gives us all a way to support each other without making it manipulating or elitist. Because I don't want to hold anything back from people who want to know something that I want them to know. Yes. It does me no good to try and manipulate money out of people to do things I want them to do. Right. And that's, and that's, that is, that is exactly why, um, 
you know, you and I have talked about this, but not doing exclusive content on Patreon. That's not what it's about. I'm not trying to put this shit behind a paywall. That doesn't do me any good. That doesn't do like anybody that. any good. Like this, this is not, this is not stuff that I'm trying to gatekeep. This is literally the stuff that, and especially I, I because my it. platform, my platform, like, like, want it yes. to be heard. Right. It's like and an the, arc. Ugh. So that's why it's just like, but it takes a lot of repeating and I think sharing because it's a mentality, especially for white people, especially for white people with more money mm-hmm. to give to give money away without it being taken from them is like sin. You like the, the, this. Look at how serious they get over taxes. All That's right. additional money. Uh huh. And the idea that it would not be earned from someone to get it from them. It's almost like I, I see it similar to why people who have found success under the system or what they deem as success um, don't want to change it because they work so hard to get it in their heads that, and they've suffered so much mostly to get it that they're like, in order to release it, there's got to be someone else suffering to get it because that's how this works. Instead of just giving it because that person, it would impact their lives. Mm-hmm. And you, it, you can, and you should. If you have billions of dollars Giving hey, away Croc- to charity for tax breaks is not impressive. Hey, Croco Duck, we we know that people will uh, that people feel that way. I just but- we just said that, by the way. We we you need to be manipulated out of your money. That how, you're not saying anything different. I know exclusivity is false value. Exclusivity does not produce value. I was thinking about this the other day, actually. I I just gotta like figure out what I want to say with it. But there's this false sense that like something being exclusive makes it valuable. That's whiteness. Mm-hmm. It's literally just whiteness. Mm-hmm. It's are you white or what little thing makes you not white? Right. Uh-uh. It's an exclusive club. And the only thing that makes it valuable is that other people can't have it. That doesn't make something valuable. Mm-hmm. Like I can't think of something that's more valuable the fewer people have it. You know, like, I'm annoyed right now. I, I don't know if you can pick up on this, but it's, it's just, it's just so annoying, like, having your shit, like, what you just said repeated right back to you. Yeah. There are certain times that that just really, just really just sets it's me It's like, that's like that white speak shit. Like, you think that you understand it in a, in a better way than how it was explained, or you're going to add this thing about white people. We know. We know. That's why we're here talking about it. And I'm trying to find ways to say it that that penetrate differently than the hundreds of years of the awareness and the speaking black women have been doing. Not that, look, everything they've been doing is awesome. I read it, I think it's great, but white people aren't reading it. So what I do then is take the information and I think, in what way can I share this that it actually touches people and maybe makes them look at black people as more human than Mm -hmm. they do right now? Because Mm -hmm. I'm tired of watching people die for no Mm -hmm. fucking reason Mm -hmm. and then having to watch people debate whether there was a good reason if they should have died or not if 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 it made sense that would never happen if you saw them as human right if it was your your cousin is a terrible person and when they die you're gonna be like damn that was sad we die and it's like well (laughs) what was the reason what happened before what did we see on camera context he should have but Meanwhile, you punch holes in your in your whole house. Yeah. And, and, and thinking about the humanizing piece of it, too. I just, fuck, that thought just went that quick. God damn it. It'll come back to me. It'll come back to me. Sorry. No, it's not your fault. It was just there and it was gone. The whole house. So I that's like one of my favorite units of me- black measurement is whole. I throw it in everything. I say, shut the whole fuck up. Just shut the, just shut the, like, shut the entire like fuck up. Fiance. And my boss was like, a whole fiance? Oh, I remembered. I remembered. Okay. So when we're talking about something from our lived experience, and then and then that white sweating behind it. It's this need to, it's this need to try and relate to something that's, it, it just will never Because then you're including yourself on our side. I'm talking to you. <laughs> like, I'm talking to you specifically. Yeah, that's, yeah, you clicked something for me because I remember when I was at work and Mary, 
had touched my hair previously, right? Uh, I liked her. I liked Mary. She's the one who told me about medical leave. She gets passes, right? But I remember also talking about the fact that people touched my hair at work and that made me uncomfortable. And she was shocked because she didn't see herself as one of the people I was talking about. Is you Mary? Now what do we do? Because you are like, oh, people do that? That is it's whole, always yes, that is all of our comment section. Like, yes. I can't believe that happened. You probably did it, Tiffany. You I can't it. believe this happened. You you did it, Megan. Like, this is you can't believe that it happened because you just did it and you felt like it was okay. Or you had somebody in your life that did not check you on a time that it has been done. So I think that's what it is. Sometimes it, it could be it was like weaponized ignorance, maybe sometimes. But sometimes it depends no. on the reaction. I think it depends on the weaponized ignorance can be used after the reaction, right? If I were to after oh, the reaction, like, yes. oh, how am I supposed to know that I get? But I truly believe Mary did not remember touching my hair. Likely. Because it is so ingrained in the body of white people to have access to the bodies of black people. Look at how easily cops touch black people. It yep. is not a, it's not a conscious decision to not touch white people, but go immediately for the black body. Immediately. For, for people to touch our hair. It is not a happenstance. Oh my God, I love your skin. I love your hair. I love everything. Just as touching, touching, touching. Touching, the tattoos. And without being checked. And so like, with the, coming it's full in your circle body. again. Right, coming full circle again, it's when we talk about when you will get it wrong, you have absolutely gotten it wrong at some point in your life. And the thing is, you got it wrong and you are still here, you got it wrong and you still get to move and exist and walk through the world, not even knowing all the time that you got it wrong. And yeah. then when you find out that you got it wrong, if your instinct is to say, no, I didn't, as opposed to, oh shit, I got it wrong. Let me not do that again. Think of that entitlement. Think of that. Like, oh, she misunderstood. I'm, on, I'm sorry. I'm uncomfortable. I'm, I'm such a human. I didn't miss it. Like, it's like, that, that's another thing, that whole misunderstood. That's being used too much. I did not misunderstood what you what you said. And this is one thing that I do love about the fucking internet is, is the fact that people try to gaslight you so much with a written comment. I'm like, He's right there. Kevin. I, Kevin's back. Kevin, I can see Kevin's everything. Back. There's a Kevin somewhere. I, I told you there's a Kevin in my past that I think that's pulling all He's this like shit from. Right but now. Kevin, I can see everything that you just said. But this concept of like, if you hurt somebody, and this is something you should think about just in general. If somebody tells you that what you said to them hurt, then you hurt. Right. Um, Why do you hurt them? Like, Believe no. that first. Okay, but I'm like, you offended or you hurt something. I'm like, no, I just, I remember Crescent Moon did that. I was fucking pissed. If you ever, if you ever start a response to someone with no, and then think that you can keep talking and they're supposed to listen to you, you're a dumbass. So I say stuff to you about your behavior, right? I'm like, that's bad. And you're like, no, I, oh, bitch, what? <laughs> I'm supposed to listen to you now? Absolutely I, not. I respond positively, not like I, I had posted something and he was like, I don't really understand um, this perspective, but, and then kept talking. And, and I posted a video like, so you thought you were just going to be like, I didn't hear what you said and shit, but here's me talking. And I was supposed to listen? Right. You could not have thought. And he was like, fair enough. <laughs> That's fair. We okay. love that response. We love that response. But okay. the whole, like, you, she misunderstood me. I did not misunderstand you. You felt it necessary to say something that wasn't necessary to say. You felt it necessary to say, mm, what she said did not feel good to me. Yeah. So I'm going to say something different. And then we're expected to sit and take it. That's yeah. the other piece of it. When people get so bent out of shape, when we respond back, like, how dare we tell yeah. you that you were wrong? How dare we say that? Why would you be upset about this? That's so weird. You're on a public platform. So you're mad that so we're I expected have feelings? To... You're upset about a stranger's feelings about something that was said to them. So right. you... Person not at all connected to the thing right. has feelings about how me, person connected to the thing, has feelings about how that other stranger not connected to the thing talked to me. I'm the one who needs to be corrected in this situation. It's like when people brag about the fact that they finally got blocked by us. To, 
something about that. Number one. Going private is kind of the shit because I can just be like, remove follower. <laughs> so their comments stay. Because you know that's the, like, oh, one of the main reasons yes. I don't like blocking people. Their comments stay and people can still respond to it. But I don't think they can come back. <laughs> that's very I smart. I kind of love it. It's very smart. And um, then they, but people can't share my sounds or my. Can't do it. Can't duet. stitch. It's a lot of, yeah. Um, but this expectation, like they get so happy about it. But but I also want to be like, if you if you drove somebody to the point of them blocking you so they never have to see you again, that's what you're proud of. Yeah. But that's the antisocial nature of whiteness. It's legitimately anti. It, it only values antisocial behaviors, and which I read in her feminism, uh, like intolerance, um, violence. Uh, other antisocial things the things that separate you from other people that mm -hmm. ostracize you you believe things like um, some humans aren't humans but yeah they're humans but they're not they're human humans they're like less human humans because they do sex work or something you know what i mean they have to have ridiculous oppositional views because it separates them and then they get to feel persecuted and victimized and then they get to be us them or like me versus we and then it's like us versus them but it's not mm -hmm. any of that we're just mm -mm. supposed to be people. Right. Peopling. Right. Individuality, not individualism. Mm -hmm. It's different. Individualism says only you matter. And individuality says only you are you. And you can bring what you can bring. And that is great. And it's complementary to the other people who also bring what they bring. They're just as interesting and unique as you not you're the only mm-hmm mm -hmm. there's a difference yeah there's group and then there's community a group is like a, a <laughs> is a people with one solid vision one vision and we all agree and if somebody right? very if somebody does anything against that vision then they are ostracized they yeah. are everything but the community, we like we know the conversation with community and 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 how it is so so different, like how we view it versus how it's viewed in white people. I don't know. I just you know, like it, it, sometimes sometimes I think about this. You you said something beginning like doing this in person and having that humanizing thing, and I think that sometimes um, I expect way more humanizing from people than what's actually there and yeah. I that's why I constantly say and so people that have answered this question when I'm like I don't understand why please know when I say I don't understand why it's a rhetorical question I absolutely understand why but it's it's that process of like I guess the recognition that not everybody thinks the way that I do which right. I talk that way a lot but right but I also think that thinking other people should humanize other people should be that should be a collective thought process like there that should be something that... that we all subscribe to right, right? We should there all are feel values that you can share with other people, right? But but traits and qualities you don't need to share. But values in terms of humans are humans. That seems like a pretty standard value. And and freedom should mean the ability to do whatever you want up until it infringes upon someone else's ability to there do whatever it is. they want. Absolutely. But white people are just like the ability to do whatever I want. Period. That's it. And that includes telling other people what they should do. Yes. But they don't have freedom. That doesn't matter. Individualism. I can say and do whatever I want. And if someone is mad at me, that's fucked up of them. Right. How dare they be mad at me for I'm just living demanding in this... something based off of their life? The other thing about the comments and like the gaslighting with it, like for people who are obsessed with sources, right? I just find this incredible. As they're demanding sources from me and a, a primary source, and is it credible? They are simultaneously taking my words and changing them. Mm -hmm. So you care so much about the authenticity of the source, but in this conversation today, right now, where you can see the words, you aren't reading them. You are legitimately reading it and going, so what you're saying is... <laughs> No. no, I was there too. That's the other thing. I, why y'all narrate back what happened? When, when you get in trouble, you're like, all I did was 
I said this, and then you said this, and then I said this, and y'all be changing what I said. And I'm like, I was there. Can we, can you address the thing? I was there. I can read. Right. What is this explanation business? It's like white eyes. It's, you know, when they're just like, I think what it is about white people. I think what she meant was, I, we read the same shit. That comment right there, that I think what she meant. I First hate all, it. Stop answering for other people. The only time that y'all will stand up for somebody else is if it's in defense of them against a black woman. I want yep. you guys to think that. I want you to think that. You will come in so quick and say, I think what they were trying to say is, no, they said what they said. They said what they said. And if I ask for clarification, I want clarification from the person that said it. Not from I'm trying to get else. them to say the thing. And you came in like, well, I think what they were referring to was, shut up. Right. Because now they're going to rely on that. Thank you so much, Susan, for explaining what I was trying to say. Yep. When you really need to be stepping in is when you see somebody being an asshole to me. And then you go, hey, don't do that. Because they get, they get real, they get, they respond as annoying as that is. Mm -hmm. They're kinder. They yeah. Are. Thank you, you so know? much for explaining it into a way that was not so aggressive. But, but, but you don't do that. So the second someone says that, and I, I have a, a few of y'all that are really good at this. Like, well, you should examine, I yeah. just said what she said. Yeah. You should examine why you took it from me and not her. You can't just leave it at. That's that other piece. Like welcome. if somebody, right. When somebody says, thank you for explaining it such a way, your next piece should be like, I didn't say anything different than what she just said to you. And, why um, do you think? Why are you taking it easier? Did that with the with the biracial kid of the white mom? Uh -huh. I remember she had posted something about it. It was great, obviously, because she's great. And someone was like, "I love the way you." This is the best answer. I love the way you put it. And she was like, "Why are you saying this?" And she right. made a video like there were people. I'm not a biracial person. I am not going to speak to it with the same energy that someone who is in the experience of the person she's asking. Uh -huh. She's asking biracial. And, but, but she made a video saying you should question why that matters. Right. If you're asking for the solution for your kid, then whatever answer you get, you should not be concerned with that they understand your intention. If I tell her crying in front of your kid about his realization that he's black, say that's happening, does not help your kid. And they got mad at me? <gasps> I think that she, uh, all the white women coming to tell me how I should have spoken nicer to her. I wasn't even mean. All I did was tell her what I would. Again, expecting a certain level of emotion that makes you comfortable when people are speaking about their lived experience is so centering and so selfish. It's so unbelievably selfish. The fact that you have people that are willing to talk about this in general, the fact that you have people that are black, indigenous, and other people of color that are talking about bigotry and white supremacy and upholding whiteness, and you, you expect us to this. So you expect us to be kind about it all you of the time when we are so talking things. about things that we have actually gone through as a way to educate you and your first response is, I wish you weren't so angry. I wish you weren't so fucking racist, but here we are. I wish you cared about content and not your concept of niceness and politeness. And not your and, comfort. Care about the yeah. content, not the comfort. That. I wanted an alliteration. I just wasn't happening. I got one. I got one. I loved it. It was good. You got content it. Content over comfort. Yeah. What are we saying? And that's why I always say it's not how, it's not what, it's why. Why is this creator taking their time outside of, because you know they don't get paid for this. Yes. They are taking their time and they are putting this out there for everyone to see and say whatever. Why are they doing that? Mm -hmm. For fun? Right. What? And if your first response to that, if your first response with all this information that you did not have before, that is actually enriching, enriching your mind, that is actually giving you a different look, and your first thing is, God, I wish that was nicer. It, it, you wish you wish nothing, right? Because you wish anything... nothing at this point. Now you're looking for reasons to not like it. If you start critic, if you start critiquing the way that a message is given, then you are not actually looking for anything other than a critique. You are looking for a way to say what you are doing is pointless. You are right. looking for a way to say that I'm if not. Gonna, just... like... And here's the deal: 
I've said this before too. If you have no intention of learning, if you have no intention of becoming an active, active anti-racist, if you have, no, then just don't do it. But you do not have to come in and right. Like, imagine this is so stupid. Like, I'm gonna walk into a room and be like, you know what? I don't want to take this class. Everything that you're doing, you're doing it wrong, and I'm not gonna do it. You like, took the time out of your me. day. Just so happy to come in and say, this is dumb. I'm not going to do it. Cool. Then just don't do the thing. It's so weird. And they'll be like, well, my support, I'm going to withdraw my support. Bruh, this is a lecture hall of thousands of people. Can you stop interrupting? Stop interrupting. We are busy. It's Making it's like, jokes and looking at my dog. Leaving the lecture hall, hi Amber, leaving the lecture hall by just grabbing your books up and rustling paper and kicking over the chair and kicking the desk and I didn't out get it. This is so stupid. I'm leaving. She didn't, that teacher didn't answer my question nice enough. Can you, you came and said, hey, can you start from the beginning? I said, no. And you're like, wow. You're going to attack me just because I asked a question? All I did was come into this class and you were talking and then I asked you to start from the beginning and you got so mad and attacked me. I was here. Can you leave now? This expectation of... I seem so pleasant. I just like such a pleasant person today. Is it like displaced individuality? It's like, I'm trying to think of something because- it's, it's a seeking, so it's a seeking for identity, right? But they don't, there's no, there's no solution. There is no identity. So it's in all these emotions, but then the only emotion they're really like allowed to have without being gaslit is like anger, justice. And then they just throw that at people. And then it doesn't even make sense. And they're just like, Wow, it's really odd that you were supposed to do what with the Chinese government when the Chinese government doesn't do this. And they're talking about George Floyd. And, and then I'm sitting there like, what is happening? Like, it's just odd. So those are like the only emotions. You're not allowed to feel sensitive. Because apparently, so someone's like, wow, you're really, you have feelings about this. And I could be like, yeah. And then they don't know what the fuck to do. Because you're supposed to go, oh, no, I don't have feelings. I don't have feelings. This doesn't make me sad or upset when you act like, People who look like me aren't people. I don't have personal experiences in my life with things that look exactly like this. And maybe we could be having a reaction to that while also wanting to convey that this is the experience of millions of people. And I am just mm -hmm. a random. And if it happens to me, then I need you to think about all the other people it happens to. Right. I'm not special. When, so one way, you know, we got on TikTok and every, I think I talked about this before when we have that moment of like, wow, I've never had an original thought before. Mm -hmm. That is either freeing or a prison. And I feel like for white people, they were like, oh no, right. I've never had an original thought. And I was like, holy shit. We're all, we maybe not all of us, but like, I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. And that allowed me to come on here and be the weirdest version the most true version of myself. And so many people are like, oh my God, ah, you think like I think. Yes. And that's so healing for me. And just like that, those human things. Human things. And then I'll throw in, and you know I'm black, right? <laughs> you know? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and whoa. then they're like, wait, do I care about black people now? Whoa. Inception. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha wait i'm relating to some oh busted oh. busted <laughs> do you remember when we did that in the wasn't that like our first live and i had my robe on it was a sunday because i was in the kitchen <laughs> i was like i'm cool that brought me back yeah but yeah, we're, we're like the cool kids. We know what the, the cool kids do. Ice in my veins. I've never had an original thought. Oh wait, wait. I think and it's a, it's a, it, it can be so freeing and it can be so healing and it builds community to find it's out collective. that people think the same way that you do. Yes. And it also allows you to, like you just said, to to care about people beyond yourself, and as a result, care about. Black people. Huh. 
Because how many of them could, could help people, you? It's almost like there's a grand design to this. It's almost, it's almost like we have been just kind of nudging you in the right direction. If you see us as human beings and not just a commodity, not just um, some tool, some resource. A tool. A tool. A, tool. a, re a resource. We're not just a resource. We're, we are. Because but we're, we're more than that. With, we're with people lived that experience. We are people that provide a resource. Let's say it that right. way. Like right. we are people we are... that provide a resource to you. We are, we, right, we right. ourselves. Our humanity is the resource, not yeah. our human body. Right. Not our body. We are not a tool, but we have the tools you have and so much more because we were used as tools. And then we had to figure out as tools how to still human. And we still knew the truth. So the benefit, we've always known the truth, which is why I say like white supremacy eats white people from the inside out. And it's like, as you get further away from white supremacy, it still impacts you, but it's a little bit more outside in because mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not part of your identity. They mm -hmm. made sure it wasn't a part of our identity. Right. So we never dehumanized anyone. In fact, well, well maybe not, let me not say that. Cause I think there is a level of dehumanization needed to to see white people and know that they're a threat period. And you, yes, you know, it's a different, it's a different type of dehumanization. Um, it's more for survival and I get it, you know, to, so realizing that's where, why I can do this work in a different way than other people can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And survival is necessary, but, right. and you, that's why you can't wait for all black people to like you. They have no, a lot of them have no reason to and still why thinking we're convincing need... you. I, I, I think it's another piece is like, why do you need, why do you need that? Why is that a need? Yeah, it's, it's because, so I, and I have to see if I remember who posted it. They were saying like, everything's been a test with white people. That's how they know their worth. You get an A on the test, you pass the test. You mm -hmm. get written down, you're a person now. Um, you're only, you know, good if someone says you're good. How, otherwise, how do you know? That's why they don't care about being terrible shits as long as we all believe we're good. Right. That's why I will murder a bunch of people, but the second I'm caught, now I'll kill myself. Right. It's not about not being bad in whiteness, it's being perceived as good. So how do you know if you're being perceived as good unless someone tells you? But that's whiteness. That's whiteness. That's doing everything for outside of you. Where are you? Yeah. I, I had to figure out who I was again. Because mm -hmm. whiteness was like, you're all of the external. You have to you have to take into consideration all of the past and all of the future and all of the current and the things that might change and and then also be around these white people all the time and are you having fun? <laughs> what? Oh. oh, you wanna? Oh, <laughs> like you're not enjoying yourself? <laughs> what are you talking about? And then someone comes and asks it. So what do you do for fun? And then you have an existential crisis. And then you go to work again. Then you forget all about it. It just sounds so miserable. It's terrible. And it's I terrible. I that for people because there are so many people who could cure cancer who are working at Amazon shipping factories. Do you know how many? I, we, we're just people. Like, I, you know, when people say I'm helping, you know, so many people. And I do feel that. I feel the impact. I believe it but I'm not special. I'm unique. I'm not special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There are so many people who have so much in here and they don't even think it's worth exploring mm -hmm. because it's not, if you look at the numbers, it makes zero sense to become a teacher when you could work at a big pharma company, sit, sit and schmooze with doctors and make $300,000 a year and have zero impact on the rest of the world, except to like take money from it. Right. I could be doing that. And that would be right and successful and I would be safe. But what, what, what comes from that though? Do you benefit from that? Do I benefit from that? Who benefits? And I just, yeah, I just want more people to mm -hmm. do that because selfishly, I would like to see things change. And right. people are the only ones that are going to do it. Corporations aren't people. Professions aren't people. Officers, senators, all these systems those in aren't place. Things. Right? They're just those all systems in place. All systems. Supreme Court 
Look at what y'all did. Nine <laughs> random ass old people, cute, do, they decide for the, for the everyone. Because, for everyone. Because other people decided on them. Are we, are we free people or not? Nah? I don't know. You know, I just want us to be able to, to question. So I'm also, oh, now that I'm private, maybe I'll bring it up. So I remember a while ago I was telling you about Christianity. Yes. And so I really want to start fostering the idea, but I really don't want people to hate me. <laughs> I, cause I truly, it keeps coming back to me. It comes back to me all the time. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to call it a religion, but it is a way of thinking. And like, if that's a way to shake up, you know, the news world, but I don't, but I have to be safe. So whatever. But I believe we should be following the teachings of questionity, like mm -hmm. question with an A. And the Q is kind of like a question mark. I like that. And um, just question fucking everything. Just question like things. Like the anti-cult cult. If it doesn't stand up to questioning, it's not good for you. There's if it can't be answered, don't invest in it. I love that. I mean, there's no reason this um looking at the way that looking at the way the world is right now, like just just today. If you can look at any news outlet or anything that has anything about what's happening in the world and you don't question one thing I am concerned with how desensitized you are I am concerned with how disconnected you are from the reality in which you are a part of to and not question anything an that's an in with these people who are still in the cult mm -hmm. of anti-question <laughs> Christianity right yeah like it's like no questions allowed and it's a way to start getting in and you should be asking you know if you have a loved one who is in it you should be asking questions of them, but like genuine questions, curious, be curious as to how they got there. Also, you should talk about the life they lived before, like remind them of times before they were like watching Fox News and shit, because they have to remember they were oppressed before. Kind of like when we remember like, oh, as a kid, I like doing this and I still like doing this now. I think that's a fundamental part of me. So you talk about before times. So mm -hmm. I have like all these things I want to talk about in terms of like what I would do if I, because I love talking about cult stuff and I'm not as connected to it because I don't have anybody in it. Right. But the Christianity part of it is like so important. To it's so me. important. And it's like a way of living. Even, the flip what side, I do. even on the flip side, for the people that are just so, um, so intent on immediately refuting anything that we have to say, why, why aren't you questioning that? Mm-hmm. Like, why are you so certain in the fact that what you were hearing is wrong? Right. You know, I've asked someone like, do you, so do you believe that you are, you have more knowledge than everybody who has, who has tried to help you here? And they won't answer it because you, because they won't say, yes, I believe I'm smarter than everybody. Mm -hmm. You got to get people to realize what they're saying and ask and say, do you listen to black women? And of course they're going to say yes. But what about this one? Well, okay, so then don't say you listen to black women. Like, very, bring it down to the basic, don't react on this high emotional level. Mm -hmm. Listen to what they're saying, like how I do in comments. I read the, and it's not clever. I just literally read the comment and I'm like, that's not a question. Right. Like, I'm at, they'll say, what do you mean? And then tell me what I mean. And I'm like, so are you asking? I'm genuinely curious. I want to hear the response. A lot of times there won't be one. And that's an answer too. And that's an answer too. No answer Listen, is an answer. Listen, you know, have active listening skills for people who you want to listen to you. Robin, Robin just said they asked me if you answered and they pretend you didn't answer and keep asking. And that in itself is an answer. That's still an answer. That's yeah. letting you know oh, they, have, so no, they yeah. have no desire to listen to you, learn from you, talk to you, communicate anything along those lines. It's still an answer. Every response yeah. that you get back to, what are you asking? Or is that a question? Or what do you want to know? Any response or, huh, you get back to that. My classic. I, sometimes I just go, huh? huh? Yeah. Sometimes I am, I find out that I misread or they didn't add in a certain thing. Because they yeah. go, oh, she must not have, this must not have landed. Yeah. Like and the whole, the say more or go on. 
yeah, I'll let it hunt. And then, some, and then sometimes they go, well, I'm just trying to, and then, then you see. And then you see right there. If, if somebody, <laughs> if, like, if, if an ask for clarification on what you said drives somebody to the defensive automatically, then they had no intention. They yeah. said exactly what they meant to say in yep. the way they said it the first time. And mm -hmm. now they're just stuck because they, they're being questioned on it. Yeah, and if a joke isn't funny, I ask, what's funny? Yeah, explain the joke to me. If they put those emojis, fuck those emojis. They say something insulting and then, and then LOL laughing, or uh, <laughs> And I go, what? And what's the joke? I want to yeah, laugh too. Sarcastically. I love saying that. What's, what's the joke? I want to laugh too. And then I'm usually blocked with a comment deleted or some shit like that. But it, for me, it's an answer. And for it's, me, every once in a while, I see it. I see it. Hi. I see it like work. And I know that other people see it, right? We know it's not really for that person. It's right. for everyone else. Mm -hmm. And I've had people go, I love when you ask, who is this for? Yes. Because it makes me ask back. Mm -hmm. When you come to correct me on my page, who are you? Did you think this was going to? How did you think this was going to go? And sometimes that's the question. Because I'm thinking, there's no way you thought this through. <laughs> sometimes I'm like, there is no fucking way. Because then I go, because I'll go with what I think. That's that's when I turn around. I go, you know what? You're correct. I am now on your side. <laughs> right after they insult me and say something stupid, they're like, "Wow, you don't give a fuck, you racist ass bitch." And I'm like, "Oh, I am now on your side. Thank you for sharing." And then they're like, <laughs> Come here, "That's not what I meant. That's not what I meant." <laughs> but but I'm on your side now. But I totally agree with you. You have convinced me. Serious ass. Bitch. Why? Why are you backtracking now? I, I agree with <laughs> I mean, you. Listen, do the unexpected. But to me, it's it's the like what I really want to say. I don't like try to think of something. Well, you know what I mean. Like I try to think of what I really want to say. Right. And it's to, directly to what they're saying, not to the subtext. Do not respond to the subtext. The stereo. If they just throw a stereotype, I will ask, "What? What do you mean?" Mm -hmm. What is it? And they go, you know what I'm saying? And I, I don't know. No, I don't. Tell me. And then make them say it. Make them say it. They won't say it. I but that's, it. that's the, so you said you think you better or you don't because you're not saying it. At least 40 years ago, they would say it. Mm-hmm. Say it. I had this exchange just, I can't even remember what post it was on, but it was back and forth. I'm like, you're not saying anything. I'm like, I'm just waiting for the answer. I've already answered it. No, you haven't. And that's another thing is like they just they, it, people will feel like they just keep repeating the initial statement. Yeah. And then they say, go back to the thread. They go, uh, you, you, you read it. I'm not going to rewrite it all over. So you didn't. Have, and a real answer can be a couple of words. I said, look, be, I asked you a very clear question. And then <laughs> subtext all over the place. I'm still waiting for my answer. Just stick to it. Stubbornness comes in handy sometimes. Or I'll just be, you know, when they're doing blackface, I just put blackface in all caps right underneath until they acknowledge it. And we're like, prove you're black. And then they'll be like, oh, I don't have to, I'm private, blackface. And then I just keep commenting blackface. Until <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Good. Be a menace right back like, to them. Just be a menace right this back. This why I had to go private because it was, it, was, it was too much. And then I'll be like, okay, I am now officially telling you you're not welcome in this space. And if you keep commenting, it would be considered harassment by me. Mm -hmm. Oh, so well, 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 this is like a street. And then I put the alarm thing. Alert, alert. And then they would comment again. But alert, alert, alert. And then I comment again. <laughs> I'm like, Consent matters. Alert, 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 alert. And they just keep all the question marks. So many questions, questions, questions. Alerts. Don't you can't work. It can't. It got it. Sometimes it's fun. Sometimes I'm like, wow, that was. I really some, did that. Well, there's I always just, a, there's it. always sometimes where somebody just takes it a bit too far, and I'm like, ah, oh, I thought we're just having like some good natured ribbing. Why do you have to go and dox me? That was not <laughs> fun. <laughs> oh no. Oh, did you I see? Just, I love when people, I think that that's just, um, I think that it's just, people are just so funny. Sun did a stitch of like one of my videos because somebody commented on a video that he did and was like, the Porsche is like loud and wrong and narcissistic. And I'm like, that was weird. <laughs> and, wrong, loud and wrong often or something. I'm like, and so like, I don't, I don't remember. And like, usually I can remember if somebody has 
gone out of pocket and we've responded. Yeah. No clue who that person is at all. So then I'm like, did we do some good natured ribbing that you got your feelings hurt about and this is how you responded? Like you, for the group was who so brutal, can't, can't handle us being like, nah. The most violent group of people that have committed the most violent acts get their feelings hurt and be like, when we say, we're explain angry. more what you're saying. We're angry and we're violent. I love that one. I love that. The alpaca. Her is right. so good. It is. But yeah. Everything that they, it's all projection. Agree. And like, cause, cause white people don't have like creativity. It's not like they came up with new scary things. Mm -hmm. They just said the things they did and then right. said, it's going to happen to you from the blacks. Right. And we're like, in what world have black men been attacking white women and trying to rape them? In what world would that have happened? And, and we don't know about it. That it wouldn't have been everywhere. Do, they just trying to live. And now you add in all this extra shit. Excuse me. And if you look at the imagery, the Im imagery they would draw was all these brown hands on these little black, little white bodies. But do you look at pictures of history? It's all white dudes sitting with the little brown girls on their legs, just like this, and holding dismembered hands. Or it's the literal reverse. Them smiling, gripping on little kids. I just, a lot of what's a lot of what's in place, a lot of the systems in place that are that are um, systemically oppressive and racist are preventative acts to try and stop the violence that they think is going to come at them. And yeah. it has been said it has been said several times is like if black people wanted revenge right. as opposed to just being able to exist, things would look entirely different. They think the way they are is the way everyone is. And the way that they, they think see that the way they are is the way that way everyone way is. Everyone would act. And as opposed if, to thinking that maybe if dominates. we just stop being violent, as yeah. opposed to expecting violence in return. This didn't exist before they did it. It wasn't like everyone was out here colonizing each other and then the whites were just the best at it. No, they started it. That they is the like, one thing, that's the one thing that you all cannot appropriate. Oh, look at the duck. That's the cutest fucking thing. Oh, I don't fuck out. Yeah, that was, I, I just, you know, sometimes I'm like, what am I doing with my life? I'm wearing overalls and I'm yelling at people on the internet. White people. <laughs> I can, you know, can I tell you how much you're like, hmm. I love the fact that the overalls became part of I don't know I just looked at them and I was like Man, what is happening but They're I super love cute, these though. overalls I yeah. love them they're cute on you they've got pockets and I'm already like what am I gonna wear to the thing overalls I need more overalls mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I come on a sweater because that's the problem with overalls is that you gotta like you know, that. Oh, there's but a look, hole you know, thanks. But it's just also weird because I'm 33 years old. I got back into roller skating and overalls after going to business school and getting my MBA and then working for a big pharma. You so that's, truly. I think that's where I'm like, what? You just went through, you went through, or you're going through <laughs> like a rebirth. Uh, like, yeah, because I've always been this. Yeah. Obviously. It's always the, been there. You just are, you're being able to access it right. now. Like and you're not yeah. being, you're not being pressed down by the oppressiveness of corporate America and what everybody else expects from you. You have, you, you are who you are and it's always who you've been. You just get to be comfortable, as comfortable as we can be right. in it, right? Like it's just, you're like, fuck it. This is who I am. Because once you realize, like, I did all, I did all the right. You did things all those things, and was miserable, and didn't do a good job according to all the people who said to do those things. Right. So I did them, and then they were like, "That doesn't seem natural on you." You just told me I have to speak. You like told this. me I have to go to school. You, I have to go to school again. I have to go to school again. Like this star method you said the situation and then the task and then the action and the result you're literally telling me how to speak 
I use that in my coachings at work. I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. Everyone does. Yeah. But as a literal thinker, do mm-hmm. you know how you've seen how I talk? Now imagine pencil skirt, right? And we're in a room with no windows, and it's a stranger, and they're like, "Tell me about a time." where you had difficulty and you overcame it. And then I... <laughs> like you saying that question, oh it, made me, it made me uncomfortable for you thinking about, first of all, the pencil skirt. I hate, I don't ever want you to like, if you like, please tell me that you got rid of all of them. I don't ever want so you to- So I think I did of the pencil skirt, but I have, I so, I, you know the picture I have where I showed you were of like in between all the men's, right? And um, I mean, I, I tried to come out through my suits a little because you couldn't wear like collars. But I was like, tweed is how I'm going to express myself. <laughs> I'm going to get a tweed the... pantsuit. I've got my tweed. <laughs> Snaps. That was me. Snaps. <laughs> I didn't come out. <laughs> they said black, dark blue. Oh, no, women could wear black. Men couldn't wear black suits. And I was like, what about dark gray always towing that line it's See, it was it was still hey. there you were like it was right there it was just trying to come out yeah but, like you're right though like you did you followed the path you went to your school you went to your school again you went to the business place and you got the job and you did the things and then they're still like ah, but and they're like some... so that email we've been working on for six months yeah i know we agreed it's not necessary but why aren't you getting it what? You know, all those things. And then you just, how did I go from that to now questioning what words are? Like, what? Who am I? Mm-hmm. And I don't want that for other people. Aww. That's so cute. I don't want that for anyone else because it was fucking terrible. Mm-hmm. And I've always been good. Like, I was always good at school. I got every interview ever before because I didn't learn that I was terrible. Um, and I would just talk to people and then they'd be like, I like you. Mm-hmm. I want you to work here. And yeah. then the world just like, <laughs> stupid. <laughs> you know? And everyone at business school was like, we ski the East. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? We dive, we do diving in Egypt, you know? <laughs> and I was like, I brought Cheerios. <laughs> in a Ziploc bag. A dry snack bag of Cheerios. And I did the robot because I can't, I think about it sometimes like, what? But the idea of interviews, like I, my body would sweat, like my oh, arms God. would sweat, my legs would sweat, my face wouldn't sweat, thank goodness. But like- But everywhere else. My bot, like I, jumping out of my skin, because the idea that I have to prep answers, the prep prep answers period, right? I can't even look. We've seen it. Mm-hmm. So on top of that, but prep it, don't prep it, because but also you're gonna have to say it like this and remember while you're saying it where you are and saying it, right? And keep it under. And also they're looking at you and writing at the same time. And also your livelihood and everyone's going to ask how it went. And also they're going to report it to the dean. The little butt when it skates away. (laughs) And they report it to the dean and then you go into the dean and he's like, you did the worst out of, where do you think you placed? Yeah. (laughs) Where do you think you ranked? Seriously. And then they tell you why you got into the, I was like, I tried to do everything right. Yeah. So I just want everyone to know before they think that they're doing the thing, don't do it. Don't do it. Just don't. Just get on TikTok. <laughs> you know? Nothing means anything at this point. You know what I mean? Be it's in your all- 30s. Wear overalls. Seriously. Wear overalls. Whatever age you want to wear overalls. Seriously. Do for, the thing. For some reason, that's the takeaway. And I'm here for it. Yeah. I put them on and I was like, fuck yeah. Getting another color. And then I got another color. I'm going to age myself. I wore overalls when I was younger, but I wore them backwards. And when I say younger, I'm talking like seven. Crisscross. Crisscross. 
Can I tell you how poorly planned it is for trying to go to the bathroom in your overall? Yeah, no, my immediate thought when I saw those, I was like, bathroom. (laughs) What are you doing? (laughs) And you gotta like stop. All the things. Yeah, no, I I'm I'm too young for that, but I know about it. I'm too young for that. Jump, jump. I had a Marcus Houston face too. I felt like that was around similar times. Oh yeah. Like hairstyle wise, you know, like when he was younger. Uh Uh-huh. 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 Yeah, so the zipper, so Lizzo, I'm mad because I got really excited about the onesie deal. But see, if you guys, if what's you wrong with the zipper? Half, so Lizzo's onesie is just a zipper down, and there's no butt, there's no, there's no uh, bathroom situation. Yeah. You have to like take it off. Um, yeah, if I get uh, like a tenth of the people on on my following list to subscribe to my Patreon for like a dollar a month, maybe I could get people to help me reach out to Lizzo. I'll get like people. I can hire like people, and I'll be like, hey. I got my onesie specs. I already know what I want. Yeah. We, Portia and I, she knows. I, I had my onesie business locked. It is locked and loaded. Backline, hood options, thumb hole options, BD mm-hmm. options. Options. Right? Right? And then you have, you have a plushie for pajamas. And then you've got the long john for warmth. And then you've got the like almost normal top. So that you could be like, yeah, yeah. Tall, but you're in a onesie. Yeah. They all have the, the butt it's that's like the, the, the zoom mullet version. Right. Like a mullet. Yeah. Yeah. Business on top. Uh huh. Party on the bottom. Uh huh. Party meaning catch. <laughs> I'm like, I'm there. Satin lined hoods for the hoods. Like we, I, I already know what I want. Yeah. You know, and there's a limited edition Fran version. Yeah. You know, some Fran. Where is she? There's a onesie. Is she She's in the sun. She's she's oh, she's today. living her best life. She is. I'm surprised she. No, it's not. The minute you say, it, you know, she's gonna be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She good. She's like got her little. What always stresses me out is that when she doesn't move, and then she's just sitting there like, <laughs> get like, out the fucking sun, move out of the sun. I understand she just, to enjoy it, but you are quite literally baking yourself right now. Just it's like you're stressing me out. But yeah, she's really good. So we're not touching her butt. It's looking better. We are not cutting. We are not putting her down for sleeps. Good. There's no way to say that. That doesn't sound like killing her. You know what I mean? No yeah. anesthesia for the friend because it's it's not. No. Let's just chop it off. Molly sunbathing. Oh, I love when dogs sunbathe. I my first dog was named Molly too. Yeah, Molly's a very doggy yeah. name. Somebody tell oh, us and you're rest? finding the cutest gifts. <laughs> oh, no. oh, and we were saying we have to hang when while you're here. Yeah, Caroline. Caroline's here. She's coming on the ninth. I don't remember how long you're staying. So the fifteenth. Nice. Yeah, Thursday through Tuesday. Hey we're... guys, do you know what's terrible? Credit scores. Credit. Did scores. you know that credit scores were invented the year I was born? Nineteen eighty nine. Yeah. So we don't need those. And here's what's bad about credit scores is that they will quickly throw things at you to increase your credit. But if you have one bad year, if you have six bad months, it affects you for 35,000 years. And we know this because as we, as if you've been here for a while, you know that I am planning my move to Chicago and I've been seriously doing it one bad year, one bad year, two years ago. I am so mad. Y'all, she was going to be less. There was a place that's like easy. It was, it was a five minute drive. Walking distance from my apartment. It was good. Mm-hmm. And they were like. This one bad year. And the one bad year was three years ago. So it didn't matter the two years of work that I've been doing. To make up for it, that one bad Yeah, year. credit scores, only oh, there's not actual community. Right. If everyone's on their own and, like, no one can get help from anyone. I love corgi butts so fucking They're so much. cute. I got to know more about corgis. Um, a friend of mine just got, a friend of mine has a corgi and just got a new corgi puppy, too. But, yes, go ahead what you're saying. Aww. But, yeah, the credit is so fucking stupid. And it's only, it's just more penalties for existing a life that isn't rich already. And it's for housing. And it, here's what's even worse is that every other piece of what it's, was needed for that apartment for me to get that place, I had like everything else, but one bad year. It's 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 so fucking infuriating. You know what? We need to end insurance. 
Insu- who can make just insurance? The facts of insurance shouldn't exist. Because they're not, uh, the, the insurance doesn't care about the people. It, ins- it, insurance is literally nothing. There's nothing, it's paperwork and it's like mm-hmm. they invented a spot to be. Mm-hmm. And, and because they exist, there's all this room for exploitation. If you don't have that, it's person to person. The person, mm-hmm. then the incentive for the doctor is to, to help people. And then they find the person, they're like, I want to help you. They're not going to be like, well, that's going to cost you $100,000. Right. Because you're trying to help the person, right? You're not trying to. Like, that was so cute. That was so cute. You know, and I'm so done with you. But it's These people, people over, it's people over systems again. It's, it's legal gambling. Systems. Yes. Yes, it is. Wins. Yes, it is. But I was telling, like I was telling you, this was so frustrating. It was so frustrating. You have to go through all of these hoops to jump through. For housing. For Who housing. Benefit? Who does that benefit? For a place to live. And like, yeah, I think that that place to live might help in doing the other things that help the credit score. It's fucking credit score. It's, it's nonsense. We don't know how it works. We just know it's terrible. It's terrible. And it's, it's, so it reminds me of like this, this analogy I'm coming up with, but not coming up with, but it's like, White privilege, if you're going to talk about what it is, it's like white people, their grade starts at 100. You know, when you go into a class and you start at 100 and then all you can do is just like lose points, right? But And black people start at zero and they have to gain points towards the end of the semester. And as hard as it is to lose a point is as hard as it is to gain a point. So that's the end of my analogy. It, I mean, it's just- You bullshit. know what I mean? Yeah. So and I don't remember where the so and with credit scores, I feel like it's similar. It's like it's everything is, but but losing a point's really easy. Um, L- like losing for points, the benefit it's super of easy. like that. losing, but to gain them back, to gain them back. So the one year, and you know, this is like it, it's whatever. But the one year got that resolved, but the amount of time that it's going to take to clear from that report is is thirty to forty five days. And if it's not cleared after 90, then I still have to call them back to get it addressed. Did I, did like, I get a where, letter of set? Like, you get a letter of satisfaction, all this stuff. Like, that's fine. Who said this is a good idea? Like, who said, let's do credit scores, and here's the proof that it's a good idea? They started in 1989. After a couple of years, we could have been like, nah, <laughs> this ain't good for us. No thanks. Who, who, been, who wins except for the credit score people? I don't understand. They didn't need all this. The people who invented credit scores didn't need a credit score. Credit card companies. Yeah, maybe. Mm-hmm. Financial redlining. It's, it's yes, it's, it's all. Yeah. It's, I, yes. There's just so many blocks put up. Mm-hmm. And like, it's for our benefit. It's, don't it's, spit it in my It's not for our money. benefit at all. It's not for our benefit. It's nobody's. And, and I just want to like, just stop. But the first, you know, the first thing to do is talk about it. So that's mm-hmm. the only reason that these things keep existing is because we just assume we take it for like, we just assume they have to be. And mm-hmm. we don't talk about it. We don't talk about salaries because it's best for the people who give us our salaries to not talk about them. Right. It's, always it's in our best make the most money us. that don't want you talking talk. about how much money you make. And that's why they don't want TikTok is because we keep talking to each other. And that's why the government building is like, no TikTok in here because we can't control what you know and talk about and share. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And exclusivity is valuable to some, but only if you're pushing like a scarcity mindset and fear and you got to get this and you want to manipulate people. So you tell them there's only two left. Uh, they're, they're trying to take the jobs from you. Yeah. Your population. Ah. What? What are you talking about? You don't know shit. And you think about, like, if we talk about credit scores outside of, outside of housing, right, um, and, like, cars, you want to get a loan for a car. The fact that if your credit is struggling, that you have to pay more. It's a crime to be poor. It's a crime tickets, be, it's a, tickets it is are a crime, crime that is only punishable by lack of access. It's, it's a crime to be poor. And speeding cannot... is only a crime to, if you are hurt by paying for the speeding ticket. It's not yep. about safety. It's not about change behavior. But I realized with Judy, when I uh, talked to my therapist, she was like, this is a thing for you. I think you need to, because remember I started like t- stop traffic stops, right? Like I think yes. traffic stops, 
are clearly dangerous for everybody involved. I mean, you're in the street for one. Like it's already, it's just bad, 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 bad. Right. Right. Um, it's not what police are supposed to be for. In Norway, like the police cars are like bright highlighter because they're there for safety and they're there so you can find them and so you need help. But here, right. they're like police barely. Um, see, I knew it. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> she, she got out of the sun and then everything turned up. Um, but yeah, she was. But here, they're dark. They're that. unmarked. They're... they're unmarked. It's just, it's adversarial. It's terrible. It's terrible. It's only a crime if you're poor because whatever, you know? And um, then just realizing like that turns into like a cop conversation. And I honestly realize I don't think I can do that. You know, certain things are, because then I know I spent like two days just going back and forth with these people and then I had to go private because debating the Nazis outside, I can't do it. I think just both parts of me, all my ancestors are like, this is too much. Because they, to me, always, I I see the slave catching Nazis. They're in uniforms. They got riot gear. They're fucking, what are they wearing all the stuff for? They're Uh out in military gear. Like, they're at war. Uh They they walk around in groups Mm -hmm. and look in places. And then, and check, you're supposed to be here. And I'm just, why are you nervous? This is for you. This is for the benefit. We're clearing out this area. And we'd be like, well, you know, only like 2% were wrongful deaths resulting from traffic stops. The and fact that you're feel, justifying just, how many wrong, like. I can't. This is like not, not for me. I've had too many, like, I haven't, and I haven't had personal experiences, but they do say like, watching these, this footage is something about, like, we see ourselves. It's like watching yourself die. Like when you watch these things. Or people that look like your family. It's like, this is what it would look like. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? And I just, even in my nice, diverse town, I, a gun was pulled on my brother in front of our house. In front of our house. And there's a police report, and I read it, and I, it'll, I'm changed forever. Because I'm reading it, and I'm like, this is what they wrote. Mm-hmm. This is what they wrote down. Right. And it's in, like, to, to read it and my neighbors are screaming because he was outside with the neighbor and then they come and apparently this cop went to high school with me and told my brother after oh I could have been on the news I think about that all the time anyway in front of my house mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I lived in a diverse little town but first to voluntarily integrate so processing that and then that's that's, you know? that's that's actually a really good point. Like when we see these traffic stops and we see these um, incidents, we see these interactions with the police being violent. Um, black people, we see ourselves as the person uh, on the receiving end of the policing. It's there's no way to not see that. There's just no way not to not see it. Outside of the fact that the people look like us, it's because we recognize that it can happen to us very easily. And white people do not have that same response. White people see themselves through the lens of the police. Or they see themselves through the lens of the person watching what's happening. They never see themselves as a person in that place. And while we, yeah. and this might seem contradictory with saying that you can't pick yourself in our shoes, which you can't, but you have to also recognize that the only way that you are seeing this is from a viewpoint of, of watching it happen yeah. or as like this or potentially being the one doing it because the ones that are like, well, maybe we don't know what happened prior to seeing this video. That is you looking at it through the eyes of the police because you are looking for a way to justify that type of treatment towards a human being. If yep. you are just saying, oh my God, that's so terrible, I can't imagine, then you are a bystander. You are the one on the sidewalk watching it happen. If your thought process is this should not be, if, if it's not, this should not be happening, then you are not thinking about the person that is being violated, the person that is experiencing the violence. You are not humanizing, coming right back to that, the person that is receiving this treatment. And that's a problem. That is a Mm -hmm. problem. And if anybody can sit here and say that the police do not abuse the power that they have been given simply because they can, then you are not humanizing anybody. You're not even humanizing the police. Exactly. Because you think that they are above reproach for the decisions that they make. The police are very much acting like judge, jury, and executioner when their job 
their job is to, if they find somebody doing a crime, is to apprehend that person and then go through the legal process, which is another, like a whole nother conversation. Yeah. But their job is not to decide if somebody is guilty, their job is not to decide if that person is guilty to then act upon that decision. And their job certainly isn't to decide that if I am scared of this person, I have every right to shoot them. There's, you cannot justify that. But and now it's cannot, like they don't even, there's no expectation that they should know the law or even no follow it. Now they're just None. like, you got to give it to me. You got to give me. And they'll be like, no, I don't. I have to be committing or in the commission of a crime. Right. And they're like, no. They're so wrong. Like, am I being, am I being, like, if you say the question, am I being detained? And they say no, but they will impede you from leaving. That is an abuse of power. Nazis. They're Nazis. Like, this is, they're Nazis. They're Nazis. I, I can't not see it. I can't. And you there's can't, no good ones. There's no. no fucking good Nazis. And people that are so convinced, like, if we, if we were to abolish the police and all of this crime would build up, first of all, First of all, most Let's of the see. crime that people Let's are try talking it. about are it's being perpetuated by the very people that are supposed to prevent it, yeah. and they don't prevent anything. That cannot no. be said enough. You call the Not police even in the mall. after something has happened. You call them when something has been done. You've been robbed. Call the police. You've and even been... then, they might just be like, "What did you yeah. want us to do? How much was it?" You go so did missing. you have a camera? The fact or? that a parent can call the police and say, my child is missing, and they say, we need 12 hours before you can file a report. I need they won't even go that. look. They won't even circle the block. They won't even look until it's been 12 hours when your child's missing. And this, is who, and this, is, and this is who people are defending. Yeah. Can you imagine calling the fucking police? My kid's missing. Has it been 12 hours? And sometimes it's longer than that. They probably just ran away. You don't even know the fucking kid, but see, there's the quickest to be like, they probably yeah. just ran away. You yep. know nothing. I'm they calling had to have ran you. Away. Like, but they're told that they know everything. They, they are in command of every situation and they have to run it because people can't. And they're trained that way. The system is designed to do what it's doing. It doesn't matter who you put in its place. It, you can take one out and put another one in. It's not going to change the point that is what the it system, is. When the police system is, yes, people. the system is white supremacy. That means that anybody in it, anybody in it, anybody in it can uphold that system. So th th I, I don't think that anybody in here is at that, but all the, especially with Tyree Nichols and people are just loving the fact that the police that did that were black. That was yeah. just everything. I'm like for, you, dense, dense. You know what, Josie? I don't know who you are, but I'm tired. Like, no. I'm like, I'm talking about what? Talking Do you know what percent of? Shut up! If you already asking about percentages, fuck you. Because if it, oh, oh, but in in the twelve hours, and is that the point? That justification of it was that the point? But, are they calling the by point. police once again? Not hearing the message. Just wanting to. Just oh. wanted to. Well, actually, actually, how would you know? Because they don't take the report down. They don't take the report. If it's a runaway, they're like, we're not doing it. So how would you know? That's the other thing about these missing kids. Like, like that was that was a statement made of such certainty. Do you know how many kids? No, we don't know how many kids. You know why we don't know that? Because there's no report filed to say Do you that know that indigenous Susie women are 10 times more likely to go missing or murdered than white women? 10. And you see on the nose? Because no, Gabby Petito. All right, but yeah, let's talk about the fact that sometimes actually people are found. Oh. For everybody in here, that, that, that comment we're talking about, that's real time. That's real time of what we've been talking about today. Real time of how we talk about uh, something is said and you want to dis dispel the message so you have to well actually it. <sighs> Must find something to contribute away from if y'all would question what you have been taught before as opposed as quickly as you question what you hear now just you imagine be questioning all imagine of your thoughts if as quickly as you heard something you're like ah well actually instead of thinking huh and what if i said two what if i said two percent like what if i answered it and then what that's the other thing like what is the next step how many are found a hundred percent now what? So what next? 
I take it all back. I love police now. No. Do you think we're being distracted by this stuff? You know, this. What's the real bail. war? What's the real war? What's the real war? What's that? With, there's always one that. What's the me. real war? Oh my god! Y'all just you know that that white people made up war. You know war is made up. Cause who the fuck was just, like, hey, we have conflict. I know. I know what we should do. Stuff. Bombs. That'll fix it. LOL didn't think you read me. Okay, so what's the joke? So Why? LOL. Now, now that we have read you, you got now the that attention. Read your comment. Now that you planetary, have the floor. Hold on. We have planetary conflict. That's the real war? Because I asked, what's the real war? And you said, we have planetary conflict. That wasn't an answer to my very clear question. Mars destroyed itself. Okay, okay. I'm done. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes, 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 okay. sometimes Can I we deal cry. with this one? The globe? Can we do the globe first? Hey, Black women, I know that it's rough for you, but Pluto... I don't even know this Pluto... One. Destroyed Mars itself. Is, is, Are we being distracted by racism to ignore what's happening <laughs> in the solar system? I should not laugh. Yeah, police are murdering black people just willy nilly because this, they don't want us to know. So nobody Mars. knows about what's happening in the galaxy. I wasn't expecting that. That that was unexpected. I wasn't the expecting certainty. That. The certainty with which that was said. We've got planetary. <laughs> the galaxy. It's perfect. <laughs> is Rebecca stuck again? Oh. Look, this is somebody screenshot this, please. <laughs> Look, she's stuck again. <laughs> I also love that she's totally stuck. She's gone. The guest has gone offline. We're going to see if she comes back. But we might be wrapping this up pretty soon because I think that her internet is just having a time. I don't think that between the galaxy gift coming through and then... Okay, listen. So, <laughs> so we're talking about the galaxy. Did you see the galaxy gift come through? I I and then here's you were stuck like this. <laughs> I saw it when I came back. Like it is so frustrating. You don't know what this is like on the side because I can hear you for like a good three seconds, and I only know it's about to fuck up because you're like, "Oh no, did Rebecca?" And then <laughs> when did get roses? <laughs> I'm very confused, Mars lady. Mars lady. Mars aliens <laughs> ruined my internet. <laughs> They're like, oh, no, they're talking about the planetary conflict. Shut it down. Shut it was, down. The aliens just shut down your internet. They're like, no. We draw the line. We've gone too far, too far. You know what? I can, I will take talking about racism, but you will not discuss Pluto. Never. That is where I draw the line. Oh my god. And you know, like I don't like space, right? Like I don't like talking about space. Cause because <laughs> what? Black holes don't even don't even fucking say it. But now there's war. So it's the real <laughs> war. It's the real war. Mars. That just took a turn. Like of all the things we expect to read. Will someone think of the Martian. <laughs> I need that. In the arms of oh, the aliens. I need, we need a shirt. Won't someone think of the aliens? <laughs> and on the back, Let's it just says the real war. The real war. <laughs> and I just want someone to be like, oh, what, which one? And I'll be like, there's a planetary conflict. Do you not understand what the aliens are going through right now? The Martians? Yo, you think we got it bad? Planetary. You think we're not human? 
You know what? This. We you know what happened? Evidence. This all started because you called Earth a globe, and not Earth. It's my fault. Because I did give that energy too. Because I was like, Mm-mm. none of this Earth business. Because <laughs> it feels globe. too real. And then they were like, "I got your ass in two hours." Like you, you summoned, you summoned, you summoned the planetary war activists, and I'm very upset. What about Pluto? How how's Pluto doing? Oh, someone just said that too. It's like Pluto was supposed to be a planet again. <laughs> I'm like, what happened to Pluto? I mean, what's the new name? My very excellent mother just. Oh wait, what is it again? Just mm-hmm. made nine pies. Just made just, nine. Just made nine. I don't like that. Ew. Who <laughs> got on planetary conflict talk? Who knew? Who, Who knew? knew? Who knew, right, Fran? We're getting a little Fran time before we have to my... go walking. Hi, sweetheart. Hi, Franny. She always just looks like, what? Fran, I Fran. was just trying to live, and now I'm here. Franny, girl. Hi, Franny. Hi, baby. We don't talk about Pluto, no, <laughs> no. We don't talk about Oh, my about God. Do you Pluto. remember when... I remember, I know that you remember this, but I remember when Encanto first, or Encanto first came out and that was like your obsession was we don't talk about Bruno. I can actually picture the video of you. (laughs) I'm obsessed with that song. I actually was just singing it to myself. Maybe maybe we should watch that when I'm there. Yeah. No, because the end of that shit, just a (laughs) how. <laughs> I, I accepted everybody. You just went through your own arc there. Yeah, no. Because I remember I, I, at the end of it, I was like trying to hold it together. Like I was definitely a mess, but he had no idea how much. Oh I my God. I wanted to like, watch that just sobbing. <laughs> she realizes what she did. <laughs> What? An old person? It was like a small part of healing that I think all of us needed. And then the town people came? And then, oh, because I was so mad at the town people. Because all they cared about was their healing. Okay, we can get into a whole Encanto talk. Um, Don't forget Mars is um, something. Exploded? I don't know. (laughs) Mars? Bruno? The planets. So what do you think about the Martians? Won't somebody <laughs> for twenty five cents a day? You too. We can could support the real war. Conflict. The real war <laughs> for the Martians. Don't be we distracted. Like, the Don't half of the country is like illegal aliens. We hate them, and we're like aliens. And we're oh God! Can you? Can you imagine the backlash if we did start saying, what about the aliens? Oh my God. I would not be ready for the men. <laughs> That's something I say every day. Feelings. No matter what it is, their, their feelings are strong and correct. Once men more, love the TikTok too. They, they do love the TikTok for the mansplaining. Yeah, I'd be seeing pictures of the universe. Why do no. they do that? Neil like deGrasse Tyson needs to just sit down somewhere. Put it behind a paywall. I don't want it. <laughs> Quit making it so accessible. Stop, I don't. Stop I don't. Stop I don't... <laughs> like, it'd be like, oh, it's so beautiful. Ah! Like, no. To me, that's a nightmare. No, it's too much. There's way too much. No, thank you. Mm-mm. No, Mm-mm. Neil, I hear you. I like when you debate the stupid and then you'd be like, that's why this is stupid. But everything else could go. If you two Hank Green, I'm friends with Hank Green. Are you really? I mean, technically. We've never like interacted. But like the 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 ticky like, friends. Ding ding ding. Ding 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 ding. But he um, could get fucked if he wants to talk about the space too. Uh, no, just kidding. I like Hank Green. He's good. Yeah. So okay. Good. I'm gonna go I need to eat. All right, I'm gonna eat candy. This was fun. I like that. That was a cute little guy. That was Thanks for thing. being in here, people.
Um, everybody, <laughs> Fun. today, do something special for the globe because you of the real important. war. You is kind. And the aliens need you. The Martians Special. need you. You are a Martian. Don't forget, we have Patreon links in our bios if you have not subscribed and if yes. you are able to. We appreciate the investment. Agreed. Remember, stay curious, it. stay questioning, yes. stay yes. learning. Yes, question everything. Curious, Except questioning, and learning. Except for me and Portia. Don't question us. Don't okay. question us. But... <laughs> <laughs> question what you've been taught. Tom. Yeah. Except for by us. I'm going to add that in every fucking time because <laughs> apparently I need to. And do we, the disclaimer is necessary. Always <laughs> listen to us. <laughs> okay. I love you. Right. Bye. Bye, everyone. Happy Sunday. Good groceries. <laughs>